All right, Ron and Fez show. I'm Ron Bennington, the MBG, also over there today. How you doing, buddy? Good, pal. It's Wally here. How you, buddies? <laughs> It was, a, it was a very awkward thing for the man behind the glass today. Uh, Eastside Dave in uh, studio today, uh, but you were giving me some shit walking in here because there was a writer strike. Yeah, well, you wanted me to talk about certain things that I'm not prepared to talk about. Um, you, you are part of the Writers Union. I am a part of the Writers Guild. Yes, I'm a part of the union, yeah. and we're on strike. And I am a writer, mm -hmm. so that also means I'm on strike. I cannot comment on certain things. Even if it's Mr. Bennington wants certain information out, right. maybe you're going to have to talk to my shop steward, or I'll talk to my shop steward or one of the, the representatives. Weird, the weird thing is your shop steward's name is Stuart, so that really works out for you. Weird. It's, it's Stuart's shop. Is his actual name right? You can Earl. You used to be our uh, shop steward at NEW, and I remember one union meeting that only had you there eating a free hamburger. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was the only one that managed to be there. I encouraged everyone to show up, and then everyone didn't. yeah. But uh, your your union much stronger. Dave. Yeah, we're we're hugely uh, powerful. We have mm -hmm. we have two wings, one on the east coast. Yeah. That's what I'm a part of, Mr. B. Yeah, you east coast. And it's kind of funny, because my name is East Side Dave. Yeah, that is kind of funny. So I thought that was fortuitous. But look, you know, this is a serious thing. I am a writer, yeah. so I just, you know, I want to inform you, I am stand with my brothers and sisters, and I will not be writing anything for the Ron Fest show for... <laughs> Until really, I, guess, I, well, I, I don't then, know why you're laughing. It's an it's an indefinite strike. I, I guess the, I guess the man behind the glass won't have any more of those funny quips you always hand him. <laughs> I have more than just shows quips. I ha I write the guy Guyerson. I do board oh, gossip. No guy Guyerson or board gossip. There will not be good. Board. That's the greatest <laughs> present you could ever give me. That well, I don't agree with that, but nevertheless, <laughs> it will not be on the show until good. the strike. I don't know why you would say it good. You know what? I can run the old ones. I won't be Because right. really, with the fucking boilerplate that you write those things, it's the same one week <laughs> after week. It might as well be a fezzatorial. I'm hey. just call it a guyatorial. <laughs> okay, I'll just talk to my shop steward about what you just said there. Stuart? Stuart shop? <laughs> I, I mean, I'm That's glad. writing, baby. That's writing comedy. We're what all, I'm doing. We're, all right. Keep laughing, Fez, because we're all having what? a good time, but I'm serious about this. I'm on strike, and I will not be writing any bits with Fez either. What kind and, of bits did you ever write for Fez? Yes, please tell me. Uh, what's your, Fez and I came up with what's your favorite kind of ice cream? And uh, Fe, the Fez and I have come up with, you know, different show topics. Well, give me uh, one of the. Uh, Fez, when was. Uh, is it uh, Cherry Vanilla? And that was when we ended that bit? Yeah, it was Cherry Vanilla. Everyone said, well, you can't top that, and we were done. Mm. Good bit. Fez and I had who's your favorite athlete of you all time. You know what to me would be the biggest ballsy move that you could do against writers? Right. Is say that Dave is one of you. <laughs> because these people are talented and they write for a living. Now, Letterman goes dark tonight. John Stewart, I believe, goes dark. Leno goes dark. So it really shows how funny all those motherfuckers are that they really, <laughs> I have nothing funny to say anymore. And it rolls out from there. They think soap operas may be affected in a week's time. Oh, my God, no. <laughs> yes. Though, first of all, those writers should be sued. <laughs> So you're not going to get your one day at Times General Hospital. That's the way. That's the what kind of power we have. Yeah, as well, writers, they, they said this is going to this could cripple L.A. because it all you know, basically once the writers goes down, the whole machine goes down. Uh, the last strike that we were on was 1988, and we forced Hollywood uh, or Holly Weird. Why don't you call him Holly Weird? Is a funny writer. All right, thing. we forced Holly Weird to lose 500 million dollars when we went on million strike. Million dollars. Say it like that. <laughs> million dollars. <laughs> That's better. When we went on strike in 1988. All right. Well, All I'll, right. I'll replace you with Lily. Now we got no Lily today. Yeah, she's a no-show again. Was she scheduled? She was scheduled for the... Uh, scheduled. We sch are in England. Scheduled. How do you say it? I can't say it. I can't I'm have problems with my S's. Yeah. Scheduled. 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 And that's why oh, he'll my. never be in the guild. Having problem with his S's? It's not a pronunciation guild. <laughs> Should be. It would be great if that happened. We have a phrase. You have to know how to pronunciate before you write <laughs> a... Pronun <laughs> pronunciate. All right, uh, by the way, Eastside Dave, uh, best adult birthday party in quite some time. Um, 7B, great hangout, a lot of fun. 
I hate to say it, and I won't even bring it up because uh, poor Lily. She was the only no show, right? Yes. Yeah. Only one of the cool kids not to show up. That was it. Amongst yeah. the Ron Fez show, yeah. And, uh, I mean, that was the last good time before my strike, so I'm going to look back <laughs> on that really with a lot of glee. Mm -hmm. But I, do, I did want to thank Ron and Fez for coming to the party. Yeah. Even if you don't support what I'm doing right now. Well, the big uh, no shows were uh, Lily and Ant. Yeah. Well, and uh, Ant uh, has become quite the topic of gossip. Oh, what is he up to? What is he doing? I noticed all the girls are very curious. He's in Atlantic City. What's a bit? What's not a bit? Is yeah. something happening? Er, mumble, mumble, mumble. And, uh, you know, it would be fine if one of those people wasn't his own sister. <laughs> 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 so he, even though he stood you up and didn't come to the party, he was the major topic. The major topic of the party. He was probably topic number one or two. And then the other uh, big problem was another stink bomb uh, went off and uh, Radio Shark was thrown out. Which I felt pretty bad about because I just was outside and I booked the Radio Shark onto our show. Why he's saying, your guys never put me up anymore. You're trying to destroy me. I helped. I'm like, calm down. Why are we having the same conversation we had seven years ago? You're invited on the show. I want to come in. Yes, come in. Be a person. So apparently he, he leaves from there being booked in to uh, running into the bathroom, lighting off a stink bomb, and then being thrown out. So as I came back in uh, from having my smoke, I uh, get pushed by a large black man who's heading back to the other <laughs> section. So as I'm giving him, watch where you're going, I see him bum-rushing the radio shark out of there <laughs> while uh, people are uh, singing na na, hey, hey, goodbye. Yeah. Very, very happily. I started that, too. Oh, I like could, that's, that's, that's another thing I wrote down. <laughs> yeah. I Good wrote one. it. And I said, let's do, let's perform this. Right. But, uh, yeah, Solera. Witty. Helped. By the way, very, very witty. You were like a, like a football crowd. <laughs> well, Solera helped to, uh, get the bouncer over. So she got the assist of getting him 69 from the place. Radio Shark getting thrown out. Is that 69? 96. 86. Hey, why don't you write me up something? Why don't you write me up a little bit today? I'm not going to do that. Why? I'm on strike. Okay. I'm on strike, Ron. Yeah. See, I'm a member of the Writers Guild. Okay? We are striking yeah. all across fucking America Could you write of poor conditions. Could you write me up a bit about Dave Loves Casey and how, how great Casey is? Just write me up uh, a great bit. Where it's a salute to Casey. Wouldn't you love to hear that, Earl? Yeah, we'd love yeah, to. Yeah, write me up that bit. Aww. I'm not good. No offense to my wife, and I hope she doesn't, you know, So leave you're me. refusing to write up this. The things I... Just a list. The things I love about Casey. I'm on strike. Poor conditions. Bad pay. I cannot write. I stand with the union. We do not... I will not it's write It's sad, anything. though. I would, love, I would love to hear about stuff about Casey. Would you do this? Would you write up a commercial spot for me? I want to do free commercials for uh, Casey's dad's place. Oh, Jesus. No, I'm going to have to decline, although that would... Wouldn't that be fantastic? It would, it would have come in helpful yeah. if it was before Sunday at midnight. Yeah. Unfortunately, last night when the bell struck, we fucking took our shit to the streets, and I will not write anything. Thank you. Not even for Casey's dad? Even though he will probably disown me for saying this. No. Uh, Mr. White, uh, uh, go to hell. His business is called uh, Chair Escalators, and it's no, fantastic. It's not. It's not chair okay. Escalators. If you're, I wish somebody else would write it up. I can't. Chair Escalators. And I Here's, wish... Get yourself a chair escalator. 866-RON-ZERO-FEZ. 866-RON-ZERO-FEZ. <laughs> and I wish I could correct you yeah. about what the real name of his company is, but I, until I talk to a representative, just because the word commercial was in it, I'm not going to do that. Chair Escalators. Okay, that's not it, though. When you're too lazy to walk. <laughs> Great for fat ladies. Chair escalators. That's really nice. Uh, he do, he do a lot of business with fat women? Yeah, he's got his own. <laughs> Clientele, so what? This should be the spot, right? <laughs> she a great big fat person. That's right. Chair escalators. That's not what it is. Yeah. Everyone can have a. What was. How do you know? Could you write me up a bit how Davy Manick is the best boy in his family and the best person to graduate from his high school? <laughs> I would love to hear that bit. No, I can't write that bit. I'm with in the a, union. I'm on strike. With a free. Uh, well, the free spots by Fat Ladies uh, Lazy Escalators. <laughs> that's, not, that's not what it's called. 
And I'm glad we're all having a good time. Is she a great big fat person? (laughs) Way too lazy to walk up the steps. Give us a call. A a fat, lazy lady in escalators. right. I don't know why you're assuming it's a woman all the time. Well, men, you need that too? Maybe older... You know what I would do if I couldn't make it up the steps? I'd move into a ranch house. <laughs> <laughs> that would be my gimmick. If I had a wheelchair, I'd go, you know what I don't like about this house? The extra floors. <laughs> Let's have one long, spread out house with really wide halls. Yeah, but then you don't get that nice view from the second floor. You have that nice elevated view overlooking your backyard. A hey, second flo- floor is never a fucking view. <laughs> no. You may get the neighbor's pool. What about third floor? My parents in Spring Lake are lucky enough to have that. If you like gangster movies, it's really probably kind of unfair that you're going, oh, I think this is going to be another Goodfellas, this is going to be another Godfather, it's going to be another Bronx Tale or Johnny Bro- Donnie Brosco, which, by the way, uh, Solera hates, Donnie, uh, hates Bronx Tale and hates Goodfellas. Hates Goodfellas? You heard me. How the hell can you hate Goodfellas? You, you heard me. Why don't you write no. up a bit about how Solera doesn't I'm, know? Oh, that's no, right. You I'm can't write. Gonna, you can't write things up anymore. I am not going. I don't understand if you understand what I'm doing here. I'm on strike because it's the Writers Guild strike. So mm. I will not be writing anything anymore. Mm, okay. Until gotcha. the strike is settled. On right. Ron Fez show. Should we do a, a, a one of your bits? No, we can't. Guy Geyerson. Okay, Ron, I write Guy Gyerson, mm-hmm. so with Guy Gyerson, Board Gossip, they're all on strike with me. Uh, Ron and Fez show, uh, hanging out with you. You know what, uh, Dave, why don't you write up something about uh, you really, Florida doesn't get the respect that they would love. I cannot write anything up. Why? I, well, look, I've told you, I'm on strike. The writers right, guild. Goodbye. I'm on strike, Ron, which means I can't write anything for the show. I can right. still be here if you'd like. You but know, the I'm writers not writing anything. The, the writers that are on strike are not getting paid. I didn't hear that. So, uh, <laughs> Fez, you're the EP, correct? Exactly. I'll let Wiki know to uh, talk to payroll. Stop it. Stopping Shut checks. It. Shut it. Shut it down. See, this is why we're Shut striking. Shut down the kitchen. This is why we're striking. <laughs> My attitude. These, no, yeah. <laughs> you know what? Everyone's laughing. Yeah, at a good you. time. <laughs> yeah. But the thing is, I'm on strike, and it's because of unfair conditions. And, you know, I don't want to say anything, but I think sometimes Ron and Fez may foster him a little bit. I don't know. Well, sure. I do. <laughs> I'm always on my team. That's my thing. And I, 28 years old, and I just saw that story everywhere, and I'm reading about it, and it's getting more and more in my head, and I'm like, stop reading about it. I was looking for some sort I, of answer. Well, here's the thing. Why did, would that affect you? Here's a guy who's not you who had a heart attack. Yeah, but still, it was, it's a guy who's supposed to be really healthy, an Olympian. Yeah, but there's people who are really healthy and they get cancer, but then we all shouldn't panic and go, what if we get cancer? Of course, that's a scary thought, so why have it? Well, it's, it's this week, too, because we're coming up to the anniversary of the heart attack. You actually have a little anniversary night planned with your heart attack? The two of you get together for a candlelight dinner? And- <laughs> I don't plan to have it, but the anniversary comes up anyway, November 10th. And what does that mean to you, the fact that it's an anniversary? It's just, it just takes me back to that place in time. It doesn't like, it doesn't feel like it's two years down the road. It feels like it's that day again. Then why don't you have a planned anniversary of here's two years that you live, that you lived? You, you, you face death down and you're fine now. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it sounds like a good idea. It's just hard to get my stupid pessimistic mind wrapped around a positive idea. Hmm. So you, what you're basically saying is you're going to find something to worry about. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and and this date is coming, and but that doesn't mean anything. That the date is coming. That doesn't mean anything. But it just takes me in my mind right back to that. But date why two years should ago. it? Because the Earth is in the same place with the Sun as it was two years ago. It doesn't even make sense. Well, it feels like that when the we- the weather's cooled off now, and it feels like you know, and it looks like that same day. It has all that same feel to it. All right, uh, is that a weekend? Yeah, it's on a Saturday this year. Why don't you fly off to the island? You go to the fucking Bermuda, <laughs> and then you're, when the date hits, you're sitting in a whole different uh, place. And just change my mindset. I always believe that if we change his his chair, everything will be okay. <laughs> uh, that is uh, it's therapy, uh, is the kind of therapy that I practice, and just move to a different spot. I don't uh, know why you would worry about it. 
Maybe he'd feel a lot healthier if he laid off the chocolate-covered walnuts after every show. The way You're the sheepy of our show. No, I'm just <laughs> wanting to, Why don't you text somebody and say, Fez is eating chocolate-covered walnuts? <laughs> and I consider that writing. That's not Thank writing. You. Yeah, that was a good bit. That's a good bit you wrote, Scabby. I didn't write yeah. it. <laughs> well, it's <laughs> not true, so you must have written it. That's Scabby. You want to do uh, Guy Garrison? I'm not going to perform anything written because I'm on strike. Mm. Thanks. Thank you. I appreciate it. Seriously. I, I, to not sit through a Guy Garrison is a, uh, oh, it's a wonderful thing. I don't know about that. Uh, your wife says uh, when you were brought, uh, that you spanked uh, Katie Holmes. I. She says you spanked to everything up to and including the wind. Uh, that if there's a really good breeze, you start spanking into it. Um, I don't see why she should have written that <laughs> on the camera. I thought she would be in strike with me, but yeah. that's cool. She's not in the guild. Is he giving new meaning to the word stiff wind? <gasps> oh! Bob, Bob. I don't Bob, know what, Bob. Well, I don't know what the stiff champ. wind means. That's the champ. <laughs> What's the definition <laughs> of stiff wind, anyway? We'll write it up. <laughs> I'm, you, not, I'm you, not going to. I'm on strike. Can't. Hey, we got a, a writer coming in here in a little bit, though. Uh, here is uh, Jerry. Jerry, you're a manifest. Yeah, uh, Ron, I yeah. just going to tell you, if Dave's not going to do anything anyway, well, I'm home and uh, let Fez get back on the mic and kind of silence his mic for a couple of days, kind of silence Dave's mic for a couple of days, and see how Fez he does. I don't think he has that chance in a long time. Well, uh, Fez, you're not really feeling up to everything because of the... The big anniversary. Exactly. Yeah, it's. Uh, I apologize, but it's playing on my mind. So we need Scabby in here to help fill in some of the dead air. And I appreciate it, Scabby. You know, way to break yeah, that strike again. The, way this, to turn on your brothers. This is the conditions I'm. For, we're, we're we're talking about. This is why we're out here. This is why my brothers and sisters are good because it's the big wigs like Fez Watley calling us Scabby. <laughs> That's now we, awful. We don't appreciate it, man. Yeah. Well, no, he's saying that for your skin. Not the fact that you crossed the picket line. Either oh, way. yeah. Flaky. Either fucking way, man. <laughs> all right, now he's freaking. All right, Bob, Bob, you'll take on all comers in uh, Wii Tennis. Uh, Wii Tennis. <laughs> what are you playing? I don't, Man, I don't, I don't know. Madden 06. Uh, wait, Madden 08. Madden 08. Do you want to do that or you just want to do Asteroids? Take it back old style. <laughs> <laughs> Never played it. Never played Asteroids? No. All right, I'll play them for 100. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, here's uh, Ernie. Ernie Armand Fez. Yeah, man, I was just calling to tell Fezzy that uh, on November 10th for the anniversary, it's uh, Rib, Rib Fest down in uh, St. Pete. Why don't you do this, Fezzy? You head back home for St. Pete. Pete, you go to Rib Fest and you take Scabby with you. He's never been to the Bay Area. Oh, I'd like that. I don't know if I want to drag him through uh, Rib Fest. I know is this for a guy who never uh, knows how to get away from his problems. You never want to get a solution. <laughs> we give you beautiful solutions. Go to Rib Fest, eat a bunch of ribs. <laughs> What's that to love? Yeah, you know what I love? It's a festival, but it's a festival of ribs. <laughs> I call it from the name. Yeah. I'd be down with Rib Fest as long as I don't have to write down any of the orders. Uh, Tom, you're on a Fez. Yeah, uh, I, I just wanted to say, uh, Dave, thanks for keep on keeping telling us that you're. Uh, on strike, you don't do anything, so he can't tell when you're working or not. Well, Scabby um, can't work uh, because of union rules. Right. I refuse to write. I, I have decided not even to have a pen or pencil near my hand. I'm not going to write down anything for the Ryan Fez show. And if, if that means that they miss personal calls and yeah. stuff like that, that's fine because I'm, I'm, I'm a writer. I won't write. What, what is the name of your uh, union? It's the writer's... I'm in Writers Guild of America East. Now I'm in the Writers Guild of America, and I can't even tell you what that is because Earl's here. <laughs> but when Earl, when you have to step out and pee, I'll explain about a secret society that's just fantastic. Let me just say, I appreciate the work you're all doing. Mm. Uh, Chris, Chris, you're on a fez. Hey, baby, fuck card holder twenty three here. Uh, see, they're the best. By the way, I, I didn't even see them over the weekend because the Ant takes them away. Yeah, Atlantic City, mm. bad behavior. It's from what what I heard through little birdie. What birdie? The right. Opie and Anthony show. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, people got kicked out for calling the people uh, bartenders cunts and stuff. Oh, that's fantastic. That's a great weekend. But where are they? Where are they cunts? That's what I want to know. <laughs> I don't have that info with me. Yeah. Need a follow-up. 
They are uh, living the life. They're living the life right now. Yeah. I, on the other hand, got caught up with Scabby's party. <laughs> Scabby turns 30. Here's uh, John. John, you're on Fez. Hey, my home, brother. What can we do for you, man? I miss crying Fez, no. actually. But listen, uh, Dave won't sign anything. I bet he signs his check at the end of the week. Uh, you refuse, don't you, uh, Dave? I will not be signing my check. In fact, I'm not even going to sign my Verizon bill that I just got in the mail yesterday. <laughs> How dare they sign me a check that I have to give them when they know that I'm on strike? I can't write it down. So you're doing a bit. This is a, you're basically a writing a bit I'm right now. I'm not doing yeah. a bit. I'm not doing a bit. I'm on strike for real. Uh, for real. For real, y'all. For real. <laughs> uh, Fred. Yes. What can we do for you? Uh, yeah, I just think the reason uh, Dave's not writing anymore has something to do with the strike. Uh, I think he ran out of all his ideas. Mm -hmm. uh, Dave doesn't have ideas. I gave him board gossip, right. and his chick said, well, tell him to do Guy Geyerson, which he <laughs> never knew. Well. But he only knows once you hand him the idea. Well, I, I, I wrote the bit I, for, yeah. of Guy Geyerson. Mm -hmm. I just didn't perform it on the air. No, I know. I agree. But you don't have the idea that, hey, this is show business. Right. If you're told, <laughs> if you're told, hey, this is a show business a bit, yeah. you'll, you'll sink your teeth into it. Oh, yeah. But I give Casey all the credit for Guy Geyerson. Oh, really? Well, yeah. Because that was something you were just doing at home, yeah. and you never thought to yourself, hey, uh, you know, I've got an idea for the show. It never would have happened if Casey didn't stand up. Probably not, Mr. B. Yeah. And this is the unfair conditions that I'm talking about. <laughs> yeah. Pointing out my flaws <laughs> every day. Well, luckily we have Bob Bob, and he's going to beat everybody at everything. I'm good. All right, let's... Uh... Uh, Fezzi, you went out for uh, therapy last night. How'd it go? Uh, nice crying session with the therapist. What were you crying about? Everything's going great. Uh, she walked me through week, week. Mm. You know, since uh, this uh, coming weekend is the anniversary of my heart attack. Mm. And then um, I also told her about being uh, becoming the man behind the glass, getting yeah. my chair moved at work. <laughs> and she kind of stared at me at first. <laughs> and then I explained to her what happened and how it worked out. And she goes, I love the idea of therapy, mm. you know, and she said she thought it was just a great idea that you had. You know, tell her next, uh, by the way, it just kills me that I can't be a fucking therapist in this country without the schooling. I refuse the schooling, mm. but I think I know moving people around helps. Tell her my next idea is to put you in a sleeping bag. <laughs> and that even means all day, I want you crawling around like a snail in that thing. Just in a comfortable sleeping bag. I would, I would say she probably wouldn't go for that, but anytime I've said, well, Ron suggested, she always says, that is a great idea. Yeah. She loves you. Maybe you should speak to her behind some glass. That could help out your sessions. Well, Maybe where does that can, come from? Why keep, insult keep him? Keep him comfortable. I thought you were on strike. Why are you in here I, if you're on strike? I'm on strike. Yes, day two of pounding the pavement, baby. And we're not going to fucking give in. By the way, did you see uh, Jay Leno came out with donuts for his uh, strike boys? I saw that. So I'm giving you a coupon for Dunkin' Munchins. Yep. That, uh, <laughs> oh, they're good. Go out and help yourself to those. And my sister in arms for the Writers Guild, Miss Tina Fey, was out there. And we were rocking and rolling, showing the man that we're not gonna let, we're not gonna get pushed around. Day two, we're still fucking on strike. All right, it's still happening. We're now, still doing John it. John Stewart is the hero because he's paying his guys for the next two weeks to be on strike. He is. Yeah. What if here's, it, I'm giving you some money to strike against me. <laughs> well, if it goes longer than two weeks, Mister Stewart, you better kick in some dough. <laughs> Why do you gotta be so insulting? Because they're getting salaries. Leno's handing out uh, Krispy Kremes. Dave, still on strike? Still on strike. We will not cave in. The writers continue to hit the pavement, even despite the cold weather. Yeah. You know what we get warmed up by? Love? No, oh, not by yeah. love. I'm sorry. Oh. Right? Normally, when there's an answer like that, it's always love. <laughs> <laughs> we get warmed up by the fact that we're going to stick together. We, we, we get warm. Why is Earl changing uh, chairs as the show goes on? He's a psychopath. Yeah. I had to, Earl, had to, what is with you? No, I sat in the wrong chair. I was working at. I was working at all, the at all this time you have before the show starts, and then as I'm talking with Eastside Dave, I just see some furniture moving off. He's inherited Fez's jitterness, jitteriness. Oh. I don't think jitterness is the word. <laughs> Jittery writer. Fez had to yell at Earl this morning for jittering, because every time Fez just simply wants to talk to Earl, Earl goes. Ah! 
And he gets chumpy. What's up, Jitterbug? No, he's, <laughs> twice he snuck up on He just, just snuck up he on you? Bullshit. Kind of, he's he's not, fucking, not, what, is he like a pull, creepy crawler? No, I didn't hear him behind me. And then when he talked, he just he startled me. That's all. He came out of nowhere. He, it was, and I want to say, this wasn't your fault, Fez. It was mine. Oh, I just heard snuck up on you. I'll tell you something about uh, Fez Watley. The man in the black pajamas. <laughs> worthy opponent. Oh, Dude, he, a worthy opponent. I am so ninja-like. Yes, I could sneak up on anyone. All right, so uh, the writer strike is going on, mm -hmm. and uh, from what I understand, a lot of the stars are going out there and helping out as well. Yeah, well, a lot uh, of the big stars, uh, uh, they they leave their show and they go out and join the line. And we couldn't be happier about them. It's yeah. nice for us working class to get some help from the big wigs in Hollywood, the big wigs on Broadway, what is like Tina Fey. And what is the rest. it uh, exactly that you're asking for? Uh, what we're asking for, Ron, is fair conditions. We'd like some DVD royalties. We want some uh, better compensation. And we would like, just overall, some goddamn respect. As writers, uh, you're we the only shit one I, on all the fucking time. You're the only one I heard come up with the respect thing and well, shit on. Now, how many of the... I know you're part of the Writers Guild. Yeah. Uh, what have you turned into TV and uh, movies over the years? Well, I uh, I have had a huge output into TV and movies. Run my contributions lie in the world of radio, and that's why d on day three and it'll continue indefinitely. I will not write anything for the Ron Fez show. I'm you're just, sorry. You're just gonna hang out here and get paid. I will uh, talk. <laughs> you know what's really witty? Why well, I know you're a witty writer yeah. is that you have that Dark Side of the Moon uh, martini glass I shirt. I found it in my. <laughs> Laundry day. Yeah, you found it because you own it. <laughs> Take full responsibility. Okay. And you act like you're embarrassed of it, but it's no worse than any of your stupid tattoos that are actually in your skin. <laughs> No taking donuts out there to look like he's the blue collar guy. Well, uh, the new Christine was out there screaming and yelling, and uh, she was carrying a sign. Why wouldn't she? The writers would be your friends. See, I think it's to me, it's just to try to keep your show out in the news. I don't think they really care that much about the writers. How it's, do you it's know? Just publicity you know, stunts. Uh, the man behind the uh, glass, a little cruel, but you know, a guy like John Stewart uh, came up through writing. Tina Fey came up through writing. Of course, Jay Leno can't do his show without writers. Why would you not think that they wouldn't side with probably the people that they're closest to on the whole staff? I think some of them, it just looks really suspicious. Leno right now in this, you know, uh, thing going on. Is he going to leave the Tonight Show? Won't he leave the Tonight Show? Uh, he's out there on the line just to make everyone fall in love with Jay Leno. Look at him. He's the he good guy. Be. But he it should be. But yeah, and if he didn't go out there, you'd be going, look at that jerk. He doesn't go out he, and everyone else does. We writers write 15 minutes of monologue for the guy every night. Forget about donuts. He should be handing out Lamborghinis. He's re he, de he depends so much on writers. And we and from what it. I understand, he, he's in the room with them and writing all night long. So like he is like is a writer right? of his own show. Yeah, he's, yeah. A, he's one of us. Yeah. So, I mean, you would you would think that that guy... Give me some Ajma medicine, Earl, before you uh, bring in another Ottoman for yourself. <laughs> <laughs> and Eva Longoria, she got blasted by the writers for continuing to work on Desperate Housewives. That was uh, the day before yesterday. Yesterday, she's out there with the writers, complete solidarity. It's just She's still to... working, though. But she's saying when she's not working, she's she goes up. They're going to shoot the scripts that are in. Yeah, That's legal. Right. Yeah. So, it's... everything that she's doing is not chasing any union rules. Because you got to remember, the actors are in a union themselves. Uh, that's true. But I think, you know, with especially like uh, the new Christine, I think that's just trying to save a show. We invented Julia Louise Dreyfus. Who's we? Writers. Oh. If we, if myself, Larry David, didn't give Julia Louise Dreyfus the scripts. I every thought it week, was Louie. It is. Julia, <laughs> Julia Louis, Louis Dreyfus? Yeah. Well, whatever her name I know, is. she's only been around for 15 years. Yeah, but she was never that good on SNL when she had to write her own material. Then we gave her the scripts that made her funny on Seinfeld and whatnot. You and Larry David. I'm not saying I had a, any part of Seinfeld. So you're saying, saying uh, writers can't be replaced. We can't be replaced. Okay. We start it. Okay. I, I do agree. You heard what I said yesterday uh, about... Um, all this stuff, too. Like, I don't understand why they can switch the script up on a writer. I don't know why the director is the number one guy on these movies, if he didn't write it. How's he supposed to know what it looks like? How is the director supposed to get the idea if the writer does not come Do up with it? Do you hate this when you see a talk show and, and the actor be like, I improv that? 
<laughs> well, you didn't improv it off of nowhere. You improv it off the script. So to go, I improv the line, but the entire setup is there. So the fact that you change the line. Not the same damn thing as writing a script, Robin Williams. Yeah, he's not inventing a plot twist. Thank you. <laughs> Seven <laughs> right. words. Yeah, uh, he came up with uh, don't eat beans and stand close to the candle. And then suddenly he wants to go on Letterman and feel like he's uh, on top of the world. Don, you're on Ron Fez. Mm, no, we lost you, buddy. Let's uh, head over here to Derek. Derek, you're on Ron Fez. Yeah, Julia Louis Dreyfus' husband is Brad Hall, who is a writer, so she may care about him. Yeah, I think Fez is being a little harsh on people uh, and saying that they don't care when he doesn't really know that. You know, what I, mean? <laughs> I could see if he worked on the show and went, "I know Julie Louis Dreyfus doesn't even talk to writers," but the fact is, we don't know what her situation is with those writers, and I'm I'm a. A little more, uh, I'm going to take people for what they were until somebody can prove it wrong. And if you watch any of these specials, like MSNBC had a special on Seinfeld, mm. and Julia Louis-Dreyfus would always say it's all in the writing. Yeah. That's always what she said. So I think she's just staying true to her word. Good for her, Julie. Well, she's done some other crappy shows, so she knows when there's good writing. <laughs> the one her husband wrote. Ouch. Why well, that's, just, that's the show she's on now, right? I or, thought, no, or that one got canceled. Yeah, the one that her husband wrote was the one where there was a clock running in the corner of the screen. I can't even remember what that was. Clock time. Oh, yeah. <laughs> How could I forget? <laughs> it's clock time, y'all. Uh, no, I know what you're talking about. Like, it took place in real time. Right. Like, it was always a half an hour. Yeah, real day. time, Christine. Yeah. Uh, which I thought was fabulous, but the the critics uh, the critics uh, downplay. Which I'm gonna you know let them go because they watched it. I just thought it was fabulous from what I heard about it, and I'm very uh, I'm actually angry. I never got to see that Viva Laughlin show. <laughs> because, Why did that come and go? Yeah, and I was dying because of the commercial of Rod 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 Let It Rod. The guy's singing like BTO while he's playing craps. And I'm like, this has got to be the greatest show ever. When's it on? Oh, it's canceled. So I didn't get to see any of it. But there's nothing funnier than me then. Ride, 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 let it ride. Uh, it's Wednesday. That's uh, board gossip day. You ready to go with this? No, I'm not. I am not writing anything for the show. There will be no board gossip. Great. Let's start board gossip. What? Razzle dazzle. It's board gossip. With Lily. A what the little fuck? Little gossip, a little chat, a little eye. It's board gossip time. Starting off with a segment called According to Anthony. Hey there, Anthony boy, why you in such a rush? Oh, the girl, she want to talk to you. Look at him, he's a bug. Steam's flea man has been stirring up trouble for one half of the Opie and Anthony show. After complaining on Pal Talk about being dumped by his girlfriend, Sir Anthony was overheard saying, Flea, you're an asshole, and proceeded to red dot him and bounce him from the room, calling it the double whammy. Oh, Flea, it seems that in this round you have certainly pressed your luck. That is, of course, according to Anthony. Hey there. Chuck Berry. What? Skittling that was Chuck Berry? Yeah, Chuck Berry. Yeah. Skittling over to spread the iris where the high society and fan and Sam radio war has reached <laughs> fever pitch. And Hugh Dini was spotted saying, quote, fuck fan and that rusty headed Negro Sam. Sorry, y'all. Bronx Johnny is the fucking man, end quote. Well, you certainly don't have to be a magician to see that Hugh Dini has also taken dead aim at the rich boys. Huh? What the hell is happening here? Hmm? Life goes on, Dave. Life doesn't go on. Producers are playing hardball. The producers are playing hardball. Scab. Moving back over to Pal Talk now. S where skank. My... Not scab. <laughs> skank scab. Moving back over to Pal Talk now, where my spies tell me that the baby fuck bash of 07 will be the social event of the season. The latter half of the duo was overheard saying it's going to blow Eastside Dave's party away. And despite one recently failed attempt, this board gossip reporter has been given the esteemed opportunity to plan this 
all night party. You're going to be planning the baby fuck party? I certainly am. Wow. I had no idea. Mm-hmm. And now... You know, I never hear from them at all anymore. Oh, they love you, Mr. Bennington. They're Anthony's girls lately. If they this, can be everybody's. Yeah. Lily plans, Ouch. If Lily plans it, that means the scab will have about four people show mm-hmm. up to that point. The show must go on, Dave. <laughs> and yeah, now you, for you a segment called, this. Who is he? Who is he? As the autumn wind brings in a cool breeze, seems RonFez.net's mock with a C's relationship with I Am Pixie has also gotten chilly. So chilly, in fact, she was recently spotted talking to a mysterious man at Eastside Dave's birthday party. Now, I can't tell you who this recently demoted African-American XM producer is, but I can tell you he hates Christmas, loves to nap in his newly remodeled 57th Street studio apartment, and clearly has anger issues with female interns. I wonder, who is he? Who is he? No, it's not. What's that? She's just taking the material that I wrote yeah. for all these years. With no, Board yours Gossip. is different. Yeah, who could it be? A question, a drop, a song? Yeah, but this is a right. mysterious who, story. This is who is he? This is fucking <laughs> ridiculous. It's all different. Keep it, no, keep laughing, everyone. <laughs> no, no, keep laughing. <laughs> keep laughing. <laughs> it's not funny. Hey, let's try to make our uh, faces look like they're all going counterclockwise while we're laughing. <laughs> <laughs> so that drives yeah. him crazy. Hopping over to ronfez.net as Impulse asks, Will Dave be a scab? To which Tolka retorts, Well, Impulse, he's already red and flaky. Well, bitch. looks like Dave needs to get at the Neosporin because according to Talker, Dave is a scab. Went scabbing on the angels Just like it did to workers on the SP line And that's today's board gossip Remember, we're always watching Good, you I'm not gonna shush I won't You are a fucking scab You scab bitch (laughs) What is so fucking funny? I am We are on strike do well, you she's, compre- not, she's not in the union. Do you comprehend that people are fucking freezing on people the streets? People demand board not gossip. I must give you know, the people what they want. This is a big but, joke to you, isn't well, it? But why should she have her shot? Because it's a writer's strike. We should be su- we should be supporting one another. And she totally fucked it up. There's no fan favorites like Jealousy or, or Dawn of Correction. I Sounds have like new <laughs> fan favorites. <laughs> Dawn of Correction. Where's the fucking mainstays like old friends? Oh. Where are Friend. And the fact that you one. bastardized, according to Melinda, Ooh. with according to Anthony, I didn't even hear Anthony in the drop. So not only are you now crossing the picket line, you're stealing material that was written. Dave, let's leave it up to the listeners. Fine. Let the listeners I'm decide. I'm sure they'll decide the right choice. Jason, you're on a fez. What do you think? Board gossip, smash your trash. That was the best board gossip ever. You're a scab then, Jason. Bruce, uh, smash your trash. Hey, guys, I thought I would never like board gossip, but I tell you, I love it now. Yeah, and you're a scab. Jilly. Put you on the list. Smash your trash. <laughs> uh, tra- uh, smash, man. She rocks. Oh, nice, nice wow. stuff. Manly name like Jilly. You're here's, on the list. Here's Pat. Pat, you're on the fez. Hey, I love the board gossip, but I got to know, how come Earl can hit all the music cues for Lily and he can't hit any for Dave? Uh, here's Tom. Tom, sure. what do you got? Love it. Love Lily and her vagina. All right, here oh, is uh, John. John, you're on Fez. Hey, that was the best board gossip. This is because the proves you don't need writers. Uh, Matt, <laughs> you're on the list, John. Smash your trash. Love, love board gossip. Can't wait for Chick Chickerson on Friday. Here's, that is uh... not a funny joke. And I swear to Jesus, if anyone tries to do this again, I, I will lose my fucking shit. No, I'm not kidding around. Nobody said, are you kidding around? You I just said that for no reason. Douglas is laughing his fucking ass off like well, this is a big joke. I'm on. What don't you understand? We are getting treated unfairly. We're on strike. Maybe now you'll come back to the table. I'm not. I'm not going to cross the picket <laughs> Ace, line. Hey, sure, I'm running fast. What do you think? Best board gossip ever. And Dave, remember, people on strike don't get paid. You're a traitor, Jerry. What do you got? 
I think Lily did a lot better job than Dave. I think she needs that bit. I think you need to give that bit to Lily. Uh, nope. It's right now. I guess it's going to be Lily's bit, and you did oh. a fabulous job with it. Fabulous. Thank you, Mr. Yeah. Bennington. She bastardized. Who could it be? Ron right. right. says demand producers who write, and, and I shall give them what they demand. Uh, <laughs> Thank you, Gossip Girl Lily. How about coming up with some, you know, uh, songs no one's heard before? All night party. What's that mean? That's all. That's something a scab would come up with, Ron Bennington. I come up with obscure songs. I put my heart and soul to it, and she takes my fucking thing that I write. Tom, what do you got? That was the best board gossip I've ever heard. Mm. Tom, you're on the blacklist. I'm glad that everyone thinks this is so funny. Well, you know what? Everyone who's calling, I'm running on the blacklist. And you're all going to be... What comes around goes around. All of you. I, I will say this. You've lost the listeners. I don't care. But you're still keeping the Pal Talk girls. They seem to be backing you up pretty much. Well, that's because they have taste, and that's because they are not scabs. Yeah. That they support the little people, Lily. See, what you don't understand, Although rich De girl. Deb said that she would like uh, Irish Alky to do it. Uh, no. No one's doing any of these bits. And our girl's just staying aloof. Thank but you, you for do, that. But you do have Casey. I count people being impartial as a vote for me. Casey said, when is the segment going to be uh, coming up called Listenable? Oh, boy. Oh, Thank you very much, sweetheart. Yeah. And, and I also want to point out, of course Lily doesn't understand how the common folks, you know, are, are freezing our asses off on the streets. She's a little rich girl, a little, <laughs> little rich muzzy. I back high society. Hey, you're going to have all hot chicks at the uh, baby fuck party? Oh, certainly. or is it just going to be a sausage party and we're all going to be gathered around the baby <laughs> There will girls? be plenty of hot chicks. Where are we going for this? Do you know yet? Uh, we haven't decided a location. I'm sure yeah. it'll be Iggy's, Scabby. I'm sure it'll be Iggy's. <laughs> it will Who not. wants a karaoke party? 7B would be great. <laughs> she has no original ideas. She went from who could it be to who, I who is he? Was that what the, the fucking thing was? Uh, here's uh, Jerry. You're on Running Fez. Hey, how about Ron and Fez with Eastside Lily? That's no. that word. You know, what, Fez yeah. and I have not made any definite plans about the future, but our show, unlike a lot of these other shows, is staying up. We are able to go on. O and A have been in uh, reruns now for two weeks. <laughs> That's right, because of the writer's strike. <laughs> I don't think this is this is a laughing matter. Well, it's the, laughing because because uh, you feel bad. That's why we're laughing. I'm feeling bad because thousands of writers are out there scratching and a clawing, like chickens. No, <laughs> like people who are trying to get fair wages. Are any of them laying eggs? This is why Ron and Fez, as much as I used to love them, have been treating writers unfairly for one and a half. Well, we only know now. one. Two years. <laughs> we only know one, and he doesn't write. I, I'm on strike. Mm. Uh, George, George, you're on Run of Fez. Yeah, this is George. I'm trying to remember which one is Dave again. Okay, he George. was uh, one of the guys that we used to have on the show that did board <laughs> gossip. Is that with a J or a G, George? It's never with a J. You know what it's, what's it with? It's an S, scumbag. That's how I spell your name. People, with really? a J would be Jorge. Yeah. Well, this is not cool, dude. Scott, you're on a fez. Hey, I want to congratulate Lily for coming up with a new bit. And Dave, if you're cold, go grab hold of the third rail. That'll warm you up. All right, Scott. <laughs> you know what? I'm going to fucking have Tina Fey on your ass. I'm going to make a call to everybody. And Lily, try try uh, having fun at the uh, Writers Guild parties coming up this Christmas. I was going to invite the whole show to the Writers Guild party, which I go to every Christmas, to meet Mr. fucking Andy Rooney. And you're out. Ooh. You are not coming. I'm not Andy Rooney. You've we used to Andy work, Rooney Yeah, before. we used to work with him down at CBS. Okay. Look like a fucking question mark. <laughs> well, that was going to be my He treat. walks like a horseshoe. Is there anyone else from CBS you'd like to meet? Cause no, was, not okay. really. Damn, now we're not going to get the stuffed mushrooms and the Chardonnay they always serve. Any way to uh, get uh, me, right. could you introduce me to Lily? Uh, sh no, I'm not going to do that. We're you know we're what? Not introducing Here's anyone the thing. To Maybe the same night as the Writers Guild party is going to be the baby fuck party, which I'm completely excited about. Will there be live music, Lily? There certainly will. Yeah, yeah, the karaoke machine. There will be a machine. live band. No, there will be a live band. Mm. I can't wait. Mm, Very either. excited. Uh, Dominic, you're on Running Fez. Lily. Yes. I can't wait for you to bring in your ventriloquist dummy, Roberta, tomorrow. Oh, yeah. If that happens, I am oh, kicking your, your dummy in the, in the face. And that live band that she's talking about yeah. is called Lily and the Scabby Cats. 
She fucking that's bitch. A good jo- that's a good joke you wrote. I didn't write that. <laughs> Who did? Who did you steal it from? I don't know what you're talking about. Keep um, laughing, Earl. Keep laughing. Here's Rick. Rick, you're on a fuzz. Hey, I just wanted to point out that if Dave's on strike, how is he writing these uh, names on his list? Yeah. I am memorizing them. I have incredible memory. I, I know all the Yankees' retired numbers. I can sure as remember your name, Kevin. So are you going to the baby fuck party? If it's on a different day than uh, Andy Rooney's party, yeah, I'll be uh, there. Your, your wife wrote, baby fuck party equal shit party. Right. That's, that's wow. not even a pun or anything. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Not the the wordplay. Yeah. <laughs> she <laughs> turned the phrase. What she did, Fez? Yeah. She took the phrase and she twisted it. What do you call that? A wordsmith? Yeah. I, I guess she's a wordsmith. I would say baby fuck party, yeah. shitty fuck party. And then she writes this. Remember the time the baby fuck girl showed up at Lily party, at birthday's party? Oh, wait. They didn't. Yes! <laughs> Thanks! Face. Oh, yeah, she's super Face. clever. Uh, they weren't actually invited. Face. So They weren't? You know why? No, I didn't invite. I didn't invite a well, lot of that people. That might have been a mistake. Actually, yeah. Actually, baby fuck people don't like to support scabs, <laughs> which is what you are. How do you know that? Uh, I've I'm not in the writer's guild, fuck. so I'm not a scab. Yes, you I fucking can't. are. No. <laughs> you are in the writer's guild if you're friends with a writer. I'm an intern. I'm not in the fucking writer's guild. I'm going to be a doctor. <laughs> You got to admit, she did do a great job. I'm not and I love, at all. I love the voice that she did. It was very oh, yeah. classy. She did a great job with the voice. It was like, Hello, Ray- <laughs> Hello it's ball gossip time with Lily. <laughs> Are you I doing a bit? Like that chef. That Are you doing a bit? Jo- I'm Lily Julia Child. All right, now do your impression of Husp. <laughs> you want Capone? Here's how you got Capone. <laughs> He puts one of yours in the hospital. He put one of his in the mug. I get it, the I'm hospital. A, he puts one of yours in the hospital, you give him a big cock. Yeah. A hosp. Jizz. Hospy. Lily, I applaud you. I thought it was great. Thank you, Fezzi. Yeah, fantastic job. Uh, you're, you're all going to hell. Uh, Tom, Tom, you're on the Fez. It's not a commandment. <laughs> that name sounds like Cheswish in Cuckoo's Nest. That's my bit, Nurse Lily. That's my bit. You're on the list, Tom. <laughs> so I, I hope you enjoyed your fucking three-second phone call. Tom's great. Leave him alone. How many Tom and Jerry's are going to show up on... Uh... Tom and Jerry's? <laughs> <laughs> I hope all there's... Pa- you're all freaked out and panicky. A, yes. You're freaked out and panicky. I am... Uh, uh, <laughs> I hope there's no mice. Um, not a little. I am fucking furious. I don't know why you would want to sabotage, um, sabotage. you know, Joe Lunchpail, okay? Freddie America. That's I what you're fucking doing. I am saving the Ron and Fez show. Yeah, we were in big trouble because we didn't have a board gossip this week. <laughs> it sounds like it's a new <laughs> bit called, according to Anthony, when Anthony's name doesn't even appear in the fucking drop. Yes, what, it does. what does that mean? That's she the way she song. speaks. She had a song. I didn't even hear his name in there. It, it said Anthony Boy. Yeah. Anthony. Do we have that? Or is the letdown? Yeah, we can, I think we can get that. Yeah, why don't we? You will see that you were wrong, Dave. We got it. Yeah. Hey there, Anthony Boy. Why you <laughs> in the rush? Yes. I thought they were saying Money Boy or something. Money Boy? When you hear... Hey there, Anthony Boy. <laughs> when we you... all grew up with that song. I'm not even going to look at her anymore. Yeah. Thank you. I bet Anthony comes to the baby fuck party. Is this going to be open to the listeners? I'm not sure yet. We'll have to uh, run that by the baby fuck girls. Will I be presented with my card? Yes. Can we make sure that card doesn't get me arrested? I need some kind of something from a lawyer to say this is not for real babies. <laughs> Don't get mixed up with your PBA card. You get pulled over. <laughs> you're a baby fuck number You know what? One. I'm glad you settled down, though, and you've joined in with the scabs, and you're good. happy. No, no, no. That's good. I'm you glad. Know, you know why? What? No, no, no. I'm not joining with the scabs, because yeah. I'm not looking at her. If I could just I know, look, yeah, you're look right. at Ron, Fez, and Earl and block out bitchy scabby, <laughs> then I'll be cool. All right. Uh, Lily, I want you to come over here to see something. Oh, I no, I can see it from here. This was a picture of Casey with your boyfriend. Oh, and look, and she and it says, "John was so happy pre Lily," and that's oh, Casey boy. with your man. Mm, I'd be insulted, oh. but fortunately for me, I actually graduated high school. 
Oh my lord! <laughs> yeah, this war is yeah, this is war is several casualties. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you 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 got called with uh, with some shrapnel on that. <laughs> the civilians always just, get it worse. I just don't Friendly see fire. Good. Yeah, he got, he got fried. <laughs> Jonathan seemed very happy. <laughs> it looks like they're at the museum, uh, your favorite place. The museum Fez. of Natural yeah. History. Uh, and uh, Dave, the Museum of Natural History. Wow. I know she's oh putting up two middle fingers. Mm. <laughs> Fuck you. Yeah, not insulting this at all. This is an emotional Stone day. Stone Cold Casey. Yeah. Very emotional day. Yeah. Jesus. Well, that'll, uh, that's what you do uh, to... Strike breakers. You're showing pictures of your wife with another guy. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, boy. Um, you never know who's going to call the uh, Ron and Fest show. Anthony, you're on the air. Hi, how you doing, guys? What do you say, buddy? Well, I don't usually just call up. You know, I enjoy the show all the time. I don't usually call up, though, uh, when there's a specific bit or anything that I really um, enjoyed, but... Oh, Lily, Jesus, what a bang up job. Mr. Oh, Anthony. Mr. Anthony. That is a compliment. Mr. Anthony, no. Fantastic. The the voice, the uh the subject matter, the the songs. You like that amazing. song. It's great. Amazing uh, no, writing. Uh wonderful. And um I just wanted to uh, R S V P uh, for the baby fuck party. Yes. Oh, after yes. missing yes. after missing uh, Dave's I, I know party. I missed, um, uh, Dave? Yeah, it's Dave's Dave. Party. Yeah. I missed yeah. Dave's party. Um, Why are you hurt me? I, I, I was busy. I was uh, in Atlantic City, as as you know, Dave. Yeah. I love you so much, though. You don't understand. It hurts, doesn't it? I, I mean, I, I, I used to scribble Anthony. Dave loves Anthony on my notebook. I don't anymore because I'm on strike. But Lily David Lee Roth used to do the same Dave. thing. Well, we did a great job. It was a great job. It wasn't. It was nothing but you shot yourself in the foot. You go on strike, and then you give the opportunity for other people to shine and show how much better they are at doing certain things, and Lily did that. I, mm. I would think that these people would support me and, and my quest for better treatment from Ron and Fez and, and compensation. So far, you haven't had anybody on your side. That's the sad well, thank part. Thank God. Right. Uh, on our show, we've never had a need for writers or... Anything like that? Show yeah. prep. I could tell just by listening. I go, this show, uh, they have no direction. They don't, there's no, there's no prep. Bypass, yeah. Bypass writing all together. And I'll, and then you'll never have a problem. With normally, I'll, I'll listen every day and go, well, they missed the big story of the day again. How do they? <laughs> <laughs> how do they? I remember on 9-11, you guys didn't even mention that it was going on. I mean, I was just talking about, wow, what a great uh, day. The sky is blue. It's uh, nice and warm out. And look, we're going to bring these chicks in and eat each other. Hey. Yeah. Hey, girls. I love you so much, yeah. Mr. Oh. Anthony. Well, I, I will be. And, Lily, uh, if you need anything uh, to help out with the uh, uh, baby fuck party, let me know. I'm oh, great. There, I'll call you. Uh, in any capacity. Great well. job again. Thank you. Fantastic. Thanks. All right, Thanks this is gentlemen. this is this baby fuck party is turning out to uh, the night the stars came out. The I night know. the stars came out. He was occupied. He's a very important person mm -hmm. and he had to do important things in at the Borgata in Atlantic City. <laughs> All right, wait, here's another picture of this slot. Uh it goes back to John and Casey looking very happy at the museum again. He seemed very happy the other night when we were, you know. What? So when you were doing what, Scab? Having sex. And also, Classless. oh geez, here's another picture. Classless. Would it be a lot no, of I've, photos? I've, I've seen the pictures before. It doesn't bother this me. This one though, uh, it looks like your blouse is open a little bit. Yeah, that Ooh. one actually kind of hurts me. <laughs> yeah. Would it be okay if they are happy? They are happy. Yeah, I know. It's just, she hasn't sometimes realized that's also pre Dave. I, yeah. Uh, that, no, that's... that was your bachelor party. <laughs> Seriously, that was your bachelor party. I am going to fucking hurt you. I don't know if it's in the rules. <laughs> don't hurt me. I your fucking, wife put it up. You put it me in. Crossing bitch. I, I've seen fucking Hoffa. What rules? <laughs> fucking baseball bats and brick fucking buildings. You're you're aiming your anger at the wrong person. You I am not aim aiming at, at the wrong yes, person. You certainly are. You scab bitch, <laughs> slutty, cunty, whore bitch. All right. Hey. Come on. I don't That's, want it to go in this direction. I'm not trying for it, Mr. B. Yeah, I don't want it to go in this I'm direction. Classy. Bring I it am down. classy. I am classy. Poe's going to come down. in here. Watch All right. There he is. I'm not going to do anything physical, Poe. All right. Um, should I read the next note from her? I don't really give a shit. All right. She says to you. Mm-hmm.
Uh, is that why John called me to apologize for your behavior? Ooh, for face. my behavior? Yeah. Face. I don't know any of this, but if that's true, then that's fine. But I'm not apologizing for my behavior. Hmm. He apologized for you, though? I don't know. I don't know any of this. So I wish it was know, in more gossip. You don't know when he calls? No. It's funny, because I uh, heard a text message go off just a couple minutes ago to Lily. wonder yeah. why she's not answering it. It was wonder, actually from wonder, Baby Girl. Wonder who What'd she say? Been? Saying that the reason Anthony wasn't at your party was because they were in Atlantic City together. Jesus Christ. I know this. Why is he living the life I want? Yeah. He's Anthony. Mm, he is. He's a wonderful person. And let's just face it. So are you, Mr. Bennington and Mr. Watley. You guys deserve to be at Atlantic City. Not mm -hmm. Lily. Oh, I go to Atlantic City all the time. Did he? If, do you think he called to apologize for your behavior? Um, he probably maybe did. I don't know wow. if that's that's true or not. But like I said, I will not apologize for my behavior. If you were a transformer, you'd be Scabatron. Mm. Hmm. I didn't that's see the movie. Is it good? Megatron. Writing again. Is it good? <laughs> I liked it. Uh, here's uh, Scott. Scott, you're on Fez. Buddies, yeah. I'm wondering when I could get my Lily identification card. That's funny. A lick? Is that what we're calling him now <laughs> yeah. these days? No. Hey, nice. Dave, did you just write that? I didn't. Dean, Scott, whatever. Dean, Dean Scott. Scott whatever. <laughs> You're falling apart over there. <laughs> I am not happy. Seriously, this is only like what, day two? And this you is day are three. Day three, day and you're three. falling apart. Well, for, but you know He's how, ready to break. The strike's going to be over. Do you know how hungry you get? On the picket line every day. I mean, you marching and doing this and carrying. Did you go out on this on the line yet? I went for ten minutes the other day. I got very what's so funny? Or I got very hungry. Why don't you t uh, take a thing out there? And make sure you stand next to some of the celebrity ones. All right, I could try. I I, I could try to find Tina. Mm. She's the big one on that. She's the big one, in New York. Yeah. Hey, uh, Lily, would you please uh, invite HTG and our girl to that party? Yes, certainly. I'm trying to finish this. I got them the first base, but I got I got to touch four. I ain't Fez Watley. <laughs> I got to touch four before I'm happy. You know what I'm saying, Fez? Oh, oh that's, that's too Pops much. Pops hands are going. That's get that. the fuck back here, with Get the fuck. Back. I don't like that. <laughs> I don't care for that at all. <laughs> What's wrong with that? You don't like that? It's a no, too I, I don't. Yes, it's too you're gonna aggressive. Try it. That's you're, the problem. You're going to try it. No, it's too much. Things getting torn apart. Well, your ass is going to get <laughs> oh, torn I, apart I, out there. My belongings. Um, this is a very rough day for our, our buddy David. And I guess rough for Lily, too, finding out this other news about him calling and apologizing. I don't like that. I don't like that. I don't really like it either, but yeah. who's to say that it's actually true? I'm sure it's true. My wife wouldn't lie. Oh, Any yeah. time like she this. She would never do such a thing. Writers and their wives keep it honest. Stop That's being what silly. we're known for. Seriously, I'm not stop being, being silly. I'm not trying to be. I'm begging you to stop being silly. I can take all the other talk. But when you just go off into silly town, I don't even know what you're doing. <laughs> uh, Jamie, you're on Fez. Lily, you were fantastic. You're like mm. a funny, attractive version of Dave. True. Mm. Thank you. I don't know what that means. It means that I'm a funnier, attract, more attractive version of you. Eastside Dave is attractive. Oh, uh, I just Can I just read this? Yeah. I just got a text message from Jonathan saying, that is not true. So, seems like somebody is lying. Here's <laughs> Mr. Butch. You're on Ron Fez. Hey, uh, hey, Dave, why don't you contact your uh, uh, radio shark and get some pointers and sabotage this party. You'll show them then, buddy. You know what? That's not a terrible idea, Mr. Butch. I'm sure I'll be invited, though. The baby fuck girls like me. Are you going to be allowed to go? That's no. That's a good point. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to be so pissed that day when we're all having a good time, girls are making out, Anthony's hanging out. And you're at home. It's our dream. I, I hopefully I'll be hanging out with Anthony and Melinda no, soon. He on will my be own at the party. Double date. Double date, just the three of you. <laughs> <laughs> if they if they'll have me. <laughs> if they ask you with a menage, would you do it? Let me ask you this. It's like a uh, yeah. approval. Yeah. If Earl and Fez asked you in Minaj, would you do it? I think you would. I don't think you would turn down anyone for anything. I want to be included in the gang. <laughs> <laughs> I want to be a Such part. A follower. Look at Earl. He's so excited. You're ready to go ass up right now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
All right, HTG wants to know why you sound so mean and angry. Why is that? Because somebody's attacking me personally and lying? Of course I'm going to be mean and angry. Why would I be um, nice and friendly? This is what happens when scabs, though, do their thing. I mean, you think we're supposed to treat you with buttercups and tulips, <laughs> and it's not the case. What? We're not. We're, we don't pamper. That was a band you. I was in, Buttercups and Tulips. <laughs> Buttercups and tulips, the old band. <laughs> uh, she uh, wrote, uh, funny, I just got a text too. It must be opposite day. Yeah, and oh, what did that text say? I don't understand. Like, why? Why can't you just be nice, Lily, and try to get along? Well, seems like she's not being nice either. Yeah. Because a girl doesn't like fighting, and that makes when she's sad, then I become sad. Yeah, I understand. That. And then when Earl's sad, I become happy. <laughs> I got a text message from Baby Girl saying yeah. Dave can come, but Casey can't because she's banned. Oh jeez. Oh well, I guess I won't be showing up then. Ask if Ron can come. Oh, you're on, already on the list. No, on her back. <laughs> I don't see why that would be a problem. <laughs> it's not up to you, is it? <laughs> see what I did? Hey, Fez, wordsmith. Uh, turn, turn of a phrase there. Turn of a phrase. And let all the chicks know that Fez is ready to fucking... Oh, no. I can bring that. Please. You gotta use it for something other than peeing, Fez. It's got other purposes, multi-purpose. I get enough out of peeing now, thank you. <laughs> uh, here's uh, Dean. Dean, you're on my fez. Hey, guys. This is Team Local 964. Been union a long time. Families union. I got news for you, Lily. You might say you're not a scab because you're an intern, but one day you won't want to be an intern. You might want to be part of something, uh, some organization that might be union affiliated, and you'll be remembered for that. So don't always think that uh, well, your God bless you, your future is always solid like that. I, I have to stick up with Dave. If to be honest understand. here, we don't have a picket line because a uh, Dave doesn't go outside, and b he's not a writer here. But and I, if you follow along what they're saying, they say don't. If you're a writer, part of the Writers Guild, don't work anywhere in the entertainment industry. Don't even work for any functions because the industry has to hurt as a whole. Well, as a writer, I'm not writing anything. Even uh, no matter what, don't go there and load boxes. They said, go ahead and check in with your own union. What you're doing right now is breaking the uh, strike, Scabby. Scabby Hayes. I actually did check the rules. I have it on the internet, and Jesus I didn't see that. Scab. You're not supposed to work anywhere, anywhere to help out right now. You've got to hurt uh, the industry. But I, I, oh, I'll check it. But I, I refuse to write anything, so. The last one went on 22 weeks, and they said cost $500 million. That's right, Fez. We fucking <laughs> stuck it to him for a half a billion. And we're going to do it double time this time. That's right. One billion dollars. One billion. <laughs> and I can't wait. All right, now, who wrote this to you? Baby girl? Baby girl. And she writes that the baby fuck girls will sit on my lap while they make out? Yeah. Right, this is too much for me. I'm going to go to this party now. <laughs> Goodbye, everyone. I quit this show. It's not time for the party. Well, uh, it's uh, Thursday, so that always means we're talking sports, right? Uh, no, we're not. I'm on strike. I've explained well, this. It's day four. I will not write anything for the Ron Fez show. Period. No Guyerson, no board gossip. So it's no Roberto. Uh, so it's Thursday. Always time for talking sports. No. You love talking sports. Son of a bitch. He loves talking sports. It's a sports editorial with Bob Bobberson. What the fuck? Play ball. Bob Bobberson's the name. Talking sports is my game. Let's get right into it. If I have to hear about Greg Oden in the, as the greatest NBA center one more time, I'm going to quit sports talk and write bad bits on a comedy show. Son of a bitch. I'm going to say this one more time. Greg Oden will never be able to eclipse uh, this generation's great NBA center, New Jersey Nets center, Ned Ed Christish. 
They may give him the nickname Curly, but this sportscaster knows a straight baller when he sees one. So until Odin shows some real progress on the NBA court, he's just another first-round bust in my book. Funky Walker, sports talker. The fuck is that even supposed to mean? That's good. No, it's it not. just seems like every, everywhere Bob Barberson goes, I get asked the same question. Then after I answer, that's a birthmark on my neck. Then I ask, then they ask, who does Bob Barberson think is going to win the Heisman Trophy this year? I thought long and hard and looked at all the front runners, but Bob Barberson's going with a dark horse, Chase Clement of the Owls of Rice University. With a 2,000, with 2,000 yards passing and a quarterback rating of over 120, uh, all on the, all on a team that bears the bears the name what? of a versatile food. Uh, what the hell is going on here? Mm. Chase Clement would have to, would uh, have my vote for the Heisman if I had one. It, Bob Bob is doing the best he can. He, he's ripping off Guy Gyerson. He's using my jokes and on a strike, on the writer's strike. He's fucking doing that in, in front of my fucking face. It's an homage. Gold it's Loom, not an homage. Goldblum signs an X. Bobberson do- talks to sports. <laughs> it's true. It's not true. Go ahead, Bob Bob. Well, ladies and germs, it looks like another legendary career has come to an end. Eric Lindros from the Philadelphia Flyers has announced his retirement from the NHL. He played for 13 magical seasons and had such clever nicknames as the Big E. He single-handedly made the Flyers the juggernaut franchise that they are before being traded to the New York Rangers for three players you've never heard of. There's nothing editorial about this. Sayonara, Eric Lindros, and we hope your next endeavor doesn't involve so many concussions. Writers can't... Writer... The writers can walk. Bobberson talks sports. You Bobberson. Are, you know. I, yeah, I fucking understand what he's doing. He's trying to get under my thing, and he's fucking scabbing, and he's crossing the picket line. And I'm not going to stand for it for too much longer. I'm not kidding around. Now it's time for Bob Bobberson's fantasy football pick of the week. <laughs> Adrian Peterson of the Minnesota Vikings broke the NFL single season rushing record last week. And who says he can't do it again? Right. Peterson is on... That's Peterson... A- that's enough. That is enough of this fucking Come shit. Come on. That's enough of this. No. That's Bob Barberson. This right fucking now. There you go. You guys want to make a big fucking deal about this whole fucking thing. What is it, it's Roddy? It's a strike. It's a strike. What do you guys not comprehend? Bob Barberson is shit and you're a fucking scamp. And Millie's a fucking scamp. True. And what is... What is it about? It's about the fucking little man who is on the streets. I don't understand what you guys... Think is so funny. I'm striking. Who's this Ronald McDonald reject ruining my bit? You are a fucking cock suck. <laughs> and I will fucking kill you. Not physically. Because then I'll get fucking fired. That's and true. And fuck- a heartbeat. And we strikers. We fucking people. We, we are pacifists. But I swear to God, I'm not above a fucking slap. All I do. I'm going to leave it. I'm going to leave it up to the, uh, the callers. Chris, what do you think? Bob Bobberson smashes. I love the new direction. Wow. You're on the list. Will, Will, you're on running Fez. Hey, Ronnie. Hey, uh, I love Bob. Maybe Dave should actually go down and strike. Okay, here's, you're on here's the list. Sean. Sean, what do you got? Hey, I think Bob Bobberson is the greatest. Casey is a lucky girl. Yeah. <laughs> and that's not me, Sean. <laughs> and I'm fucking... Is it, that wasn't it, you it, doing that. No, it wasn't. It was a fucking scam. And why does everyone think this is so funny? All I do your face is, is give right. to the Ron and Fez show. That's all I do. And what happens? Ron Bennington and Fez Watley put their cocks in my ass. <laughs> what? And here you go. <laughs> oh, don't pull your pants. Here you go. Oh, no. No. And you no, know, take no. your ass in the back. No. no, no. Come on. You know, no. Fuck it. Fuck my ass. <laughs> If that's what you guys want to do, because you might not be doing it physically, but you sure as shit are doing it mentally. Fuck my ass. Here it is. No. I'm like a fucking pin cushion for the Ron Fez show Pull your pants as up. a writer. I and, can't. But replace the word pin with fuck. I'm your fuck cushion. You guys are using your cocks. It's like staring into the sun over here. Oh. Oh. You know what, Bob? Whatever the fucking your name is. <laughs> Bob Bobberson. At Madden, but your fucking story sucked. First of all, and you're a scab. You're a, you're a goddamn scab. It's not a fucking current events piece. Someone fuck me. Jim. Here. Jim, what do you got? I'm telling you, I don't like sports, but I love that Bob Bobberson. You're on wow. the fucking list, Jimmy. You're on the list. Everyone thinks this is a big joke. Tom, what do you got for us? Bob, 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 Bob Bobberson. He rocks. He People rocks. loving Bob Bobberson. They don't. 
They're just thinking hey, that they're having a good time, a good little joke. Dave, back when the spike, when the strike is over, we'd love to have you back. But until that time, the show must go on. The show, can, no, my pieces should not be on the air. Can I give Thank a ro- can I give a roast beef sandwich guarantee? <laughs> oh, that's my <laughs> fucking bit, scab face. <laughs> you, you know what? Cunt. He's young. <laughs> He's a young fat jerk. Joe, Joe, what do you got? Yeah, Bob Barberson, uh, he's the best. I mean, he really knows uh, sports from a fan's perspective. I, he I does. Like he knows it from his... Uh, O-E. You're fans. on the list. I like him. Johnny L., what do you got? Hey, Bob Barberson, uh, he's bringing the new light to the Ron and Fez show. Keep it up, you rocks. Two ends in that, Johnny? Two ends? People love. People love. You're all on the fucking list, and your phone callers are fucking me in the ass. And I see Earl Douglas trying to fuck me, and all I do is care about you guys for goddamn two years. I've been writing Roberto. I've been writing. And this, the fucking puppet. He's Roberto for, Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? That's Bob Bobberson. You, <laughs> you know what? I give my goddamn heart and soul. And, uh, <laughs> I give my heart and soul to this show, and I get the cock in the ass and the shit in the mouth. Like you're a fuck cushion. Right, like a fuck cushion. Shit mouth fuck cushion. And you know what I'm going to do then? What's you that? You know what? Everyone's going to have a good fucking time. I'm going to fucking join the picket line right now. I'm protesting. I'm Peace. Going, I'm bye going bye. outside. Enjoy. I'm going, no, I'm go going to, outside. Go to 30 Rock. No, I'm going outside. Serrano Fez Show. Serrano Fez Show. 866-RON-ZERO-FEZ. 866-RON-ZERO-FEZ. I noticed this, Fezzy, ever since you became executive producer, every time we come back from a commercial, you're playing a song about yourself. Oh, yeah. Odd coincidence, I Isn't think. it odd? Yes. Uh, Earl, you got brought back into the studio. You think you can keep the wincing and distractings to a minimum there? Yeah, I mean, it was. I'll keep the spasms to a minimum. Uh, Dave has uh, walked out on us after Bob Boberson. In uh, hindsight, it probably was a little too close to Guy Gyerson. Well, I guess. I mean, maybe there's some similarities, but... I want to be more like Jimmy Kimmel and the uh, all the wonderful cast out there supporting. Did you notice, Fez, that every cast is doing it now? Oh, yeah. Everyone's jumped on the bandwagon and they're bringing the food. Yeah, it's all for I don't show. think this is going to end soon. I've been reading this over, and, of course, the last person to get the information from is... Uh, Dave, because he doesn't even understand his own profession. And by the way, he is in the Writers Guild, but the reason why is he used to write traffic for one of the um, Westwood One uh, formats, so we had to join the Writers Guild there. He doesn't write TV scripts. He doesn't write movie scripts. He doesn't really do much of anything. But it basically comes down to this. The writers would like to be compensated for stuff that's downloaded on the Internet, and phones the producers are saying what is that money we don't even know where the money is going to be we don't know if you can make money off of material through the phones and material through the internet so we're at a stalemate yeah and you don't even hear anything where it's like oh the sides met again no they haven't met no they the- both uh, they're both in the uh hardcore thing and if you uh do negotiations, Fez. You, whoever calls the meeting, is the guy who's going to lose. So you don't want to be the guy who says, hey, we need to sit down and have a meeting. You want to see if the other guy cracks first. And everybody's got their war chest going right now. Everybody's got a little money. Um, the writers are not going to have the people even understanding there's a strike until their favorite shows stop coming on TV, and that's January. So up until that point, uh, we don't know what's going to happen. So this is going to be take a while. Uh, Dave has walked out on us now. I don't know whether I should hire a full-time scab. You know, normally I'm a pro-union guy right. across the board. Uh, but Dave is turning me around on that because I'm like, well, he's got a great job, and he doesn't write here. How is this a problem for him? Uh, Earl, what, what do you think should happen with Dave? <laughs> Dave, I think we should make some. Got to make the move. You gotta, He's fired. You know, yeah, you got to make the move. Who would and, we bring in? Um, you know, someone who someone who can write and someone who can. Someone the exact opposite of you. <laughs> but not. We need somebody who's not Earl. And hmm. I, I swear to this, if I get rid of Dave, I might as well get rid of Earl and Pitsy too. 
because if you really had to say who's our strongest link, and I hate to say it, and it just shows what a empty show this is, but that would be Dave. That's the scary thing. Dave is the strongest link of all the producers, then Pitsy and then Earl. I'm running third on that race? If. That's only because we don't have another person. I'm going to, no, you know what? I'm going to put you fourth behind the uh, ash can. So it's going to go Dave, <laughs> Pitsy, the ash can, <laughs> then you. That ash can's doing a hell of a job. Yeah. Oh, wait, I forgot. We have a urinal. So oh, yeah. it's your fifth. It's Dave, Pitsy, uh, urinal, ash can, then you. I'm now ash behind, can's upset. Yeah. I'm running behind a piss receptacle. You're not even in, you can't even see the piss receptacle from where you are. I mean, you're far back right now, Earl. I, you're the only person who needs to be pulled. You would, you would have to come in with a urinal cake in your mouth. Earl, you got to look at the, the position I'm in. I have a co-host that can't even be in the room right now. So what do I need people to do? To step where? Up. Yeah. And yet you, 12 minutes in, grabbed your back. You pulled your back sitting in a chair. I, I didn't pull my back. It was a spasm of some sort. It just shot through my back. I was, and it, it, almost like an electrical charge went through my body. All right. Uh, now, you would think uh, Casey, Dave's wife, would be like, uh, let's get him back here. Um, it's not working that way at all. Uh, she writes, go, Dave. Fuck this fascist bullshit. So uh, they're lining up against us. And now, Fezzi, you and I are being seen as the Rockefellers wearing big hats. Oh, now we're management or something. Yeah. It's ridiculous. Uh, I don't Where's Bronx Johnny? Go find Dave for me, would you, Johnny? He went running out of here. See if you can find him. Um, here's uh, Coke. You're running Fez. Hey, bring up Bronx Johnny, man. He's fucking radio gold every time he's on the goddamn air. There is no possible way I could have Johnny. You heard Johnny today with, boss, I need to protect myself, and I got to look out for Johnny, and uh, why can't you give everybody a show? Johnny is as bad as Earl by not falling on a fucking grenade for Ronnie B. Yeah, I always fall on a grenade for you. I would, I you would, fall I would on take your own grenade. I would take a bullet for you, Ronnie. I mean, Out of the gun that I'm shooting? <laughs> then I would fucking have faith in you. The only bullet I want you to take is the one I'm shooting at you. Because no one else wants to shoot me. Uh, here is uh, Joe. Joe, you're on a fuzz. Uh, hey, hey, buddy. Uh, yeah, Ronnie, you must be exhausted carrying the show on your back three hours every day, but... Uh, I had an idea, though, for Earl. Um, I think he should, number one, start lifting weights, and number two, join the Nation of Islam. Every time, you know, Dave or someone talks to him, put the smack down, and when... Uh, when You're Ronnie not a fighter, are you, Earl? No, not really. Never been in a fight in your life, uh, other than your sisters? Uh, you know, my brother and I, we, we fought a lot. You ever fight anybody won. outside the family? Um, once. Yeah. Melissa, you're on Fez. Hi, how are you? Yeah. Uh, well, I guess there's only one solution, and it's to bring back the Midnight Rider. Don't write for us, honey. We'll do okay. our own stuff. All right. We'll do our own stuff. Uh, Jim, Jim, you're on Run Fez. Hey, I nominate Lily. She did a great job on board gossip, and she's always good on the air. Earl, I'm going to leave it up to you. Should we bring Lily in? No, no way we're going to bring Lily in. Absolutely not. People don't realize this, but she would have been hired now if it wasn't for Earl. You cock blocked her and brought in Pitsy. I just picked, I thought I picked a better person. And you were wrong, right? Has Pitsy shined at all? No, not really. But, but at least Pitsy, Lily's just a cold-hearted snake. She's just an awful person, mean person. Just to you. Uh, Joseph, you're on Run of Fez. Na, 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 na. That's why he's. Hey, Davey, goodbye. Eek, <laughs> Mm. Well, it's crazy times. It's crazy times. Here's the Brooklyn Ace. Ace, you're running Fez. As much as I hate to say it, I got to side with Dave on this one. The right is a right this time. The mm. producer's got to give him the cash. Yeah. Well, I just hope that you come back to us once the strike is over. And these are, I'm going to go out of my way to uh, to try to look good in front of everyone. That's what uh, you have to do when it's your show. I've been watching Leno do this, Jimmy Kimmel. You have to act like I'm with everybody. 
Yeah, I don't want to get lumped in with the suits. We're not part of the fat cats. Speaking of which, you have a fat cat, right? I have a fat cat that I believe was given to me pregnant. Uh, or you got it pregnant. Robert, you're on Ronnie Fez. Hey, uh, Ronnie B., uh, why don't you give Big A a chance at that position? I'm sure he could use the money, and him and Fez, they get along so great. I mean, how could you go wrong? No word yet from uh, Bronx uh, uh, Johnny? Have not seen Bronx Johnny come back yet. Uh, does he have a phone? Then I would what? call him. Thank you. I don't know what goes on in that room, Earl. But yeah. I want you to talk to the executive producer later. Okay. And keep this thing flying. Keep it moving along. Uh, Scott, Scott, you're on my Fez. Yeah, I was thinking, uh, how about Jonathan? At least that way Casey could still uh, get to enjoy the show. They're calling him LL Cool J now. Ladies love Cool Jonathan. I don't understand it, but I guess they do. I don't see what the attraction is there. I got news for you. I miss that redheaded bastard. I miss the redheaded bastard. He would talk back to me where Earl just winces. I didn't wince. Yeah, you're looking at me like uh, like you can't see properly. Well, I'm looking at you just fine. You're looking at me like I'm off in a horizon somewhere, and you're staring into the uh, sun. And speak up like a big boy. I'm speaking up fine. I'm speaking up fine. It's only like fucking Charlie Brown's teacher over there. Uh, Kenny, Kenny, you're on running Fez. Hello. Yeah. Love the show, man. Uh, I say goodbye to Dave. Uh, I think Lily does a better job. I think Bob done a great job. And uh, it's nice to listen to the show with you guys without listening to Dave's whine and about scabs and things. And really, he's the biggest scab of them all. Well, he uh, has been in here, but I guess he went down to 30 Rock. Uh, to is that where everybody in New York is picketing Thirty Rock? Yeah, yeah. They're not in front of like Letterman, and they're not in front of the Daily Show. They all just pulled together. Yeah, yeah. right. Rockefeller Plaza. Mm. Uh, it's going to take me a couple minutes. I'm going to try to call Bronx Johnny here and get him on the phone and see if he's uh, found Dave. Is joined in, which. If I was one of the writers out there, I would say, show me something you've written, Dave, before you can join this picket line. Something more than a two-car pileup on the turnpike now or the, something. Now the thing or is, something. Now, they're, they're questioning all Internet-related material that goes on the air. I mean, it goes on the Internet as far as with the stuff they've written. What is your point? Be I mean, how do you even track, like, the... You know, let's say the NBC site has content on it, and then, like, say, YouTube has something... That, you know, NBC might not. They're all going to pull themselves off YouTube within the next couple of years. And literally more entertainment, they say, is going to go out on telephones where you'll be able to watch uh, any TV show you want on a telephone. Here is our friend uh, Bronx Johnny. Oh, it's got to go. Hey, hey. Johnny. Oh, it's got to go. I got to get uh, Johnny on the phone. Uh, what goes on over there, Earl? I might have to flip you back out. I may have to flip you back out. Uh, here's uh, Rick. Rick, you're on run of Fez. Yo, buddies. Yeah. Hey, Fezzy. Yeah, buddy. Yo, your cat's not pregnant. It's got worms. It's going to have to have huge worms for its stomach to be that big. It no, might just be bloated from it. Ones. They're a bunch of little worms. All right. That's, that's, probably, that's worse than kittens, I think. If she starts giving birth to worms all over the apartment. Let me tell you something, my brother. If that cat's got worms, yeah. you've got worms. You yourself. They're contagious to humans? Absolutely. Absolutely they're contagious to humans. This cat is a disaster. All right, do we got Bronx Johnny now? Yes. Yep, we do. Johnny. Hey, what's up, boss? You tell me what's up. Where did, Have you found Dave? I, I, I can semi make somebody out with a fucking sign. I don't know if that's him, though. Take that ball. Take that ball. The, how about the person? I'm going to talk to you later, Johnny. You come back on up. Uh, here is uh, Aaron. Aaron, you're on Ronnie Fez. Hey, Dave's the biggest scab of all. He says he's putting everybody on this list that he's, you know, writing down names and going to get you back. If he's on strike, he shouldn't be writing anything. Well, I think you're allowed to uh, write a laundry list for yourself. The point is not to write a list uh, that will uh, be viewed as entertainment by people.
All right, Eastside Dave is uh, down on the street uh, in front of our uh, building. Did anybody take any pictures of him, Fez, for the website? Uh, I don't know if any pictures have been taken. I don't think so. Mm, we're not... Give us fairness, we beg of you. Run and Fez, we boo, boo, boo. Give us fairness, we beg of you. Run and Fez, we boo, boo, boo. Give us fairness, we beg of you. Run and Fez, we boo, boo, boo. Uh, Dave? Yes. The security is not happy with your little skit that you're on, doing downstairs. Who is it? Uh, the security for the building. This is not a. You don't have anything uh, lined up. You have a sign. I they have said, signs protesting Ryan Fez. I grabbed some magic markers at the Dwayne Reed right across the street as soon as I left. Yes. Mm. All right. This is, and, and as for the security, this is my First Amendment right. First well, or Fourth Amendment, you, whatever. You're supposed and, to go I'm down. Not even in front of the building. I'm in front of the, the the boards with the with the graffiti. So I'm I'm fucking doing. I'm demonstrating peacefully. No one's getting hurt. Here. They moved you down. They moved you away from our building and down in front of the empty lot. Yes, they Good. kicked me out. Yes, I actually two buildings have kicked me out out of the uh, way, and they uh, threatened uh, by calling the cops on me. So I'm uh, uh, protesting in front of a billboard uh, for Mike Nichols' new film. All right. Loving the time of cholera. But I'm, pe I'm protesting peacefully. I didn't know Mike uh, Nichols did that film. Yes, he did. And the screenplay is by Academy Award winner Ronald Harwood, if that means anything to do. But you know what? I don't know why we're talking about this. It's protesting the unfair conditions of Ron and Fez. Several people have asked me, what is Ron and Fez? And I've said, Ron and Fez are the people who treat us badly. Can uh, we get you any lunch, Mexican man. food, or a donut? Excuse me? Why do you no. say Ron and Fez boo, boo, boo? Boo, we're booing you. We oh, oh. Booing I thought it was we're like boo, boo, thing. kitty, no. or that's my boo. There's commas. Excuse me, Mr. Bennington, there's commas. In, well, you are pausing. What fair treatment I'm talking about. All right. and, and let, me hear, here. let me hear you hear some of the other chants. You can hurt our feelings and hurt our pride. Writers strike. We never die. You can hurt our feelings. You can hurt our pride, but run us, strike. We never die. Treat us fairly. Treat us right. That scabby lily really hurt our plate. All Treat right. us fairly. Treat us right. This is really, that scabby lily really hurt our plate. This is really going we badly. We need phrase, Simon says. Conditions make us protest. Run and fit. We don't need that here phrase, Simon says. Conditions make us protest. Run and fit. Run and fit. Run and We be in hell. We protest Mohawk, Perfect, and the Cavill. Run and fence runners, we be in hell. This is a we fucking breakdown. Mohawk, <laughs> and the Cavill. All right, I'm going to put you on hold for a second, Dave. I'll be back. Wow. It's weird, too, because doesn't he have to come back to work if and when the strike is over? And he technically burning bridges by doing this shit? Well, you know, it's going to get a little ugly, and then hopefully we can all just uh, uh, just say to each other, look... Let's put it in the past. I mean, obviously, I'm hurt by the boo, boo, boo thing. Sure. And uh, uh, saying things about Fez. I know. I hope I don't have to take him food down on the picket line <laughs> just to show any sort of support. If you do, could you bring me up something, too? You're not striking. I know. I'm starving. Oh, okay. I was in such a hurry today. I only had time to eat one breakfast. So it's been a busy day for me. There's been no brunch. Rush, rush, rush with you. Yeah, I know. I like to have a breakfast, <laughs> a brunch, and a lunch before I get in here. All right, I'm going to go back and check the way things are going on the picket line. Dave. Yes, Mr. Baker. Do you need anything like a coat or a common sense? Anything you know, at all we can give you? Like that common sense line was not very nice. I know. And I got plenty of it, and I don't need a coat. You know why? Because we tough it out. The writers, people, we tough it out. We're on the sidewalk. We're hearing numbers. I got two people next to me. Well, one, the, the other guy was just a mailman. He left. But that doesn't, that's irrelevant. The whole point is, I'm toughing it out. I'm staying to the streets. Hey, hey. Ho, ho. What the posse got to go? Hey, hey. What? Ho, ho. This one I like. I hate Wadley it. Posse got to go. Hey, well, you hey. are the big problem ho, here. Ho. Dougley Earl got to go. Hey, hey. Ho, ho. Dougley Earl has got to go. I'm feeling better. I'm feeling fine when I stand on one and says picket line. Hey, I'm Dave. Feeling better. Yes. Uh, your chick's breasts are just enormous. I don't know what's. This is exact. This is the type of thing I'm talking about. That is not necessary when I'm on strike to talk about my. But I mean, she's on pal talk. Uh, wife's fun bags. I don't need you know. 
I don't know what type of language I can use out here in public. Yeah, just yeah, be careful with that. It's not appropriate. And these are the conditions I'm talking about right now. And I'm, I am protesting peacefully, sir, so you don't need to move me again. They're trying to move me further down the road. You can, I'll go further down the road, but my voice will still be heard. Yeah, you're going to get us in trouble with the building. I'm basically on Fifth Avenue at this point. I don't see why it doesn't matter. You're getting further away. Get them out of there, Radio Lair. Hey, uh, SW. hey, Dave. Oh, uh, she's arching her. Uh, she's arching her back, too. It's too much. Okay, well, that's really. I, that's not my concern at this wow. point. I have well, a lot of my concern. matters. Jeez, that looks like a Popeye muscle. Compensation oh, through that church. DVD royalties <laughs> all around. Just a more cheerful attitude. All right, we're, Especially from Fez and Earl. We're gonna, yeah, Fez and Earl are the bad guys, but let everybody on the line know uh, that I'm one of the good guys. I'm like uh, Kimmel and Jay Leno and Eva Longoria. Okay, good. I was going to bring you food, but why don't you just go back and get yourself something and then bring me the receipt. Okay, you know what, Mr. B, this is the, you know, it's the No, I do. I want you to get something happen, nice. Right? Bring me the receceipt. Good, keep laughing, Earl. I can fuck it, even if I can't uh, his see back you, hurts too much. Your, your big, stupid grin over the phone. This is a serious thing we're doing out here. This is a serious event. Yes, sir? We, we protest Ryan Fez, sir. Okay. Ryan Fez, go ahead. I don't know. Yes. You know what? Uh, could you do me this favor, uh, Dave, and uh, get a sure. big blow-up rat? I love All the right. big blow-up so rat. This is Those gonna, things this frighten is a whole me. big funny thing for everyone, huh? Yeah. Working conditions and this and that. The, the fact that my that Lily stole board gossip, the fact that Guy Geyer said was butchered. Sorry, ma'am. Uh, I screamed in, in the face Dave, of the uh, uh, we Dave, uh, we got to take a break, but we'll call back and check on you, okay? All right, fine. Ron and Fizz got to go. Hey, hey. Ho, ho. Ron and Fizz have got to go. Hey, hey. Ho, ho. All right, this is a rough Ron day for me uh, uh, personally because I don't uh, cross picket lines, but I never had one actually uh, come up after I was inside. <laughs> so I don't know what to do. Even if I leave now, I'm crossing a picket line. Does it count when you leave? Yeah, I think it does. Wow. Great, we're trapped. Yeah, we can't get out of here. Unless somebody rolls a ball and he chases it, <laughs> and then this whole thing will be over. Uh, we'll take a break. Back, Ron Fez. It's the Ron Fez show. It's Fez Paul with the uh, Cowbells song. Uh, we are down a man. Our only side, Dave, has walked out and joined the writer strike, uh, even though he does, he's not a, a paid writer for us, and this isn't TV or film. Somehow he got in his head after Bob Bobberson today to uh, walk out on the show. And um, I, I guess it'll be up to XM what happens to him in the future, something I personally don't uh, care about one way or the other. By the way, Fez, this is big news out now. Uh, Marie Osmond, she's uh, dancing for the stars. And she dances every week, and people are like, oh, my God, look at her. She can dance nice, and she's a good dancer. And this has been her big comeback. Her dad died. The uh, head of the Osmond family died. But she said, I'm going to uh, keep on dancing with the stars. Oh, that's nice, Marie. Just, you know, the, the I nice... Love, I love it, though. I think it's the show must go on. No, I think it's, oh, my God, this dead man's not going to get in the way of my television comeback. Maybe they'll give me and Donnie another variety show as long as I keep fainting and dancing for America. Why doesn't she just keep right on dancing, but this week she's dancing on her dad's uh, fresh grave? That's how much, uh, to me, I think she wants to win. I am now the uh, the world's biggest Marie Osmond fan. Which is, means barely. You know, you're barely a fan and you're still the world's biggest. But I, Fezzi, who is she up against? She's up against uh, Kat Cora, I believe. Right. Is uh, dancing against right? her from Iron <laughs> Chef. Uh, Val Venus is still in this. No. Dancing with the stars. I think she's going to beat both of them. And uh, Gene London, uh, Philadelphia's really? own Gene London. <laughs> who had a kid's show there back in the 70s. I think she's going to defeat all of them. Her dad dies. She hasn't stopped dancing. Yeah. Uh, I hope the funeral isn't scheduled for the same day as a results show, because Marie will skip the funeral. Yeah, I, um, I like it, though. 
I like the attitude. Now, here's Letitia. Letitia, you are a performer yourself, right? Yes. Uh, would you keep on dancing? I don't know. If my father died, mm-hmm. well, I guess she needs it, though. Yeah. You know, but I I wouldn't, no. See, here's the thing. I am a father, and I never would want to get in fr- uh, the way of my kids. And I would tell them, my last w- lines were, you go back there, and you beat Val Venus, and you beat Cat Core, and you bring home the gold. <laughs> because she could make... Uh, keep on dancing. Who said that, uh, Earl? Uh, I thought that was the Gentries. Yeah. Now, as a producer, why wouldn't you have grabbed that the first time I gave you? That's why I said, who said that, Earl? To let you know. Uh, Earl, we'll flip out. You're already out of here. Uh, I'm going to have to pull you. I oh, that again. I, I go, I'm going to have to pull you from not keeping up with the show. I can't run this show, Letitia, without Eastside Dave. I understand. He is my go-to guy. He is uh, what I like to call the man in the middle, the man who's always uh, prepared for it. And he's out on strike right now. David, how are you? Keep on dancing, Marie. You yeah. Stick it to the man. Are right, you? What we do? We stick it to the man. You st- shut off the mics. You still? Runners on strike. I'm doing fine, Mister B. You're still listening, I though. You're still listening to the show. Yeah. Sign my side. Yeah. Uh, are you cold out there, Dave? I should uh, grab my jacket before I stormed out, but I was so furious. Yeah, I came out without a coat. Uh, no, I can at least have an undershirt or I, maybe a, a regular shirt without holes in it. But I, that's fine. I'm cool because I'm here. I, I pound the pavement. It's what I do. I know you do. I know you're all fired up with this now. I got to do another spy report. Um, spy report. Uh, Kat Cora has dropped out of Dancing with the Stars. She is too distraught over Marie Osmond's father. Uh, passing away. Now that's class. <laughs> Apparently they were sleeping together. Apparently she says, you don't understand. He was my lover. You know, uh, I'll even go another spy report. Spy report. I uh, feel sorry for this little woman from Long Island. She's mid 40s. She's not a star. Uh, spent her life just being a regular gal. She meets Paul McCartney, uh, swaps a little spit with him. Now the paparazzi follow her constantly. This is why stars date stars. You wouldn't want to do this to a normal person. You wouldn't want everybody bothering them. Yeah, she is on the cover of uh, both the Rolling Nick. Stone. Yeah, she's on the cover <laughs> of the Rolling Stone. <laughs> no. Don't, yeah. Don't break his heart, Paul. No. Don't break his heart, lady. Yeah. I like that last bitch. Uh, well, that last bitch, as you said, she's writing a book about all the horrible things that the McCartney family did to her. What a they, uh, the kids, Paul McCartney's kids, used to call her kickstand, which <laughs> you wouldn't think would be mean except for you found out she was missing a leg. That's the only time that you know, insult works. I'm going to tell you, it's not, a, uh, it's not a show that's coming together well today, but there's plenty of line of the day stuff in here. Letitia, there's plenty of line of the day stuff <laughs> in here. English women uh, have no class. I uh, think they're well known for that. Dave, uh, I, I hate to buy you another spy report. Spy report. Uh, Chunk, man, you're on the Run of Fez show. Hey, Ronnie B., what's going on? Yeah. It's Dick Holder, 769. I got a spy report for you, man. Give it to spy us. Spy report. I just heard on uh, headline news that uh, Fox's hit shows 24, Bones, and House no longer have January schedules because of the writer's strike. All right, there you have it. Fox is falling apart. Uh, They're not going to have a show anymore. No more shows will be on Fox. They're going to go dark. This is like when the lights went out on Broadway. Uh, Miami 2017, I believe is the name of it. We got the power in our hands now. Yeah, things are going your way. We're going to shut you down, Murdoch. Can I tell you this? I'm starting to believe, and this is a radio psychic, I am, here's my radio psychic. The studios radio are going psychic. to cave. They're going to cave in the cave. Uh, so uh, here's another spy report. Spy report. Uh, your wife's tits are huge, Dave. Uh, it's really not necessary. <laughs> yeah. No. But I mean, it's got to be said. Nobody's no, mentioned no, it today. That's like the third or fourth time, Mr. Banks, and not in this moment of crisis that I'm doing right here. I don't need that. Thank you know you. what? It's, it's all in the spirit of what's happening. I don't get the, what kind of spirit that would be, though. Yeah. Hey, Dave? Yes, Mr. Uh, she, she put him right in the screen. She put her what? She put, she put her breast right in the screen. Okay. Yeah. Really, sweetheart, I'm cold out here, please. I know Not you today. are. Dave, everybody's uh, for you. Um, Thank you. Now, uh, and I got another spy report because I got the news up here. Spy report. It looks like OJ could actually cop a plea. 
That's the latest rumor. Because he does not think that he can get out of a trial. If you look at his eyes right there. That's the, the eyes of a scared man. Oh, yeah. They're darting back and forth. He remembers that jail cell. Another spy report. Spy report. Dave, this will be interesting to you. Yeah. Are you serious? Are you serious? Yes. Yes. Uh, according to the report here, I'm trying to read it as this is going by. The writers' union is ecstatic. Woo! All right, so oh it's over, pal. Love you, man. Yeah. Okay, you know what? I'm back. That's cool. <laughs> this is one of the best days of my life. This is what it's all about, Mister P. You people, the system, Ron, the, the corporation, everybody, the studios. You coward! You bow down to our event. Well, I, I, I really think it had to do more with those shows canceling than anything else. But congratulations, your side won. You got to feel good about it. They, I, I feel amazing about it. You kidding me? Thank yeah. God we don't live in Pakistan. We live in a place that lets us demonstrate peacefully outside the Green Cafe. Right, why don't, don't you head back up here? In a way, why don't you give me and Fezzi a bubble up? Just get us a couple of bubble up. Oh, that'd be nice. Yeah. We'll see you in a minute, Dave. Congratulations. The Guild wins. Yeah. Well, they really didn't, but I didn't know what else to say to him. I wanted him to feel good about something today. He forgot his coat. uh, Dave's back up. Let me take a look at the signs, Dave. I didn't have a chance to say them. Those motherfuckers. Yeah, congratulations. Way to go, Dave. I just had a gentleman Uh say in the elevator, hang in there, David. How he knew my name, I have no idea. He said, hang in there, David. The nameplate. And I said, well, fine. But anyway, I said, I don't need to hang in there anymore. We just kicked their ass. We just won. By the way, Best that, day of my life. that gentleman uh, was Master Poe. Uh, Ron and Fez, yeah. unfair to writers. You spelled writers wrong. Yeah. Writers, Ron and Fez on strike. Ron and Fez, inch. Penny pincher. Oh, pinch pennies. Writers on strike. Wordy. I, yeah. Yeah, that is way too uh, wordy. Well. And uh, what's that? Protes? Prote- protest. I, I don't really know how to spell That's protes. Protes, yeah. Yeah. Protes. You, you need a T there, Forgot too. the T. Protes, Ron and Fest. People got the point anyway. All right. They got the point. Well, it's over, David. <laughs> I feel so happy that now I'm, we're back on top. What know? are you going to write for us? Something? I'd like to write a poem if I can. Can I whip something together real yeah, quick? Yeah, take your time and yeah. put something together. And it's great to have the writers back. By the way, when you were uh, out, uh, they, uh, Earl was pulled for the third time today. Shanana. So, Shanana. I'm going to write that down, too. Look at that. First thing I wrote, Shanana. Yeah. Hey, goodbye. And then, uh, well, that was actually written by YA, but you, you know, added the S for I Shana. I don't Nana. remember that. He drank heavily that night. Uh, Earl, it looks like uh, you're not going to be able to pull it off in this room. I would like to go back in and try it again. I'm All right, come on in here one last time. But if not, you're going to have to go for a third room. Yeah. You're really... Because he's not I, pulling it off in this room either. I'm going to have to ask Wiki if we could just have another room. That we could put Earl in. Um, you know, he doesn't understand what it means to pound the pavement, to work hard, to hustle. Look at this. Mosey he is a in. slow walk inside of a He's and unbelievably you slow. You should have came down to the protest with me and showed the system how it works, showed people how how, how you work. Now, during the, after you were out on strike, I'll fill you in on There's a lot of changes, you can see. We got the new studio yeah, and all. It's feels, crazy. It feels so much different since yeah. I've been gone. Now, uh, also... Uh, when I was back smoking out the window like an animal, uh-huh. like a teenage animal with no fucking respect, uh, Fez, you were pissed and we're kicking stuff around. What's going on over there, Mr. EP? Uh, just pissed that everything I told the staff to do, uh, something different happened. I couldn't have laid anything out simpler and just everything was screwing up. No, and, there Fez. Wasn't one, and there wasn't one guy I could go to. Now, who do you sound like you're doing right now? Uh, Earl Douglas. You yeah. sound exactly like our last executive producer. Oh, uh, I understand that, but here's the thing. You're even saying I understand. <laughs> I understand that. Yeah. Let me guess. Uh, you're going to get right on it? Things are going <laughs> to turn around? I don't know if this can be turned around. I have never seen a bigger fucking bunch of losers today. <laughs> <laughs> and I am serious. 
pity. It's just the way you sound th- say things makes us laugh. Like when you hurt, it, it couldn't be funnier. I noticed that, you know, giggling That's starts. where your natural <laughs> comedy comes from, your own pain. Yeah. They just uh, have my blood pressure through the roof. I mean, things I said uh, came out absolute opposite. Maybe you're not explaining yourself properly. I couldn't be. I couldn't be better at that. So you feel like you're doing a, a great job in their bed. Yes, that is Earl. Yes, <laughs> that's exactly what Earl used to say. Earl, do you feel vindicated? I feel very vindicated. Even Why you're, you're the worst? One of the- People that have let him down. No, my, well, not, I'm not happy that he's he's furious. You that, just said you feel vindicated. No, but the, the part where I'll say something and the exact opposite will happen, I know that chapter and verse. Yeah, you wrote that. Well, yeah, that, because you do it. So why do you think it is? Is there something about that chair no one respects? I, I thought that Fez would have had this thing turned around in days. I mean, I, 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 I've been, I know exactly what he's feeling. I, but you're one of the people who doesn't listen to him. I mean, I, I don't know. Honestly, I don't know. Well, yeah, I screwed up a couple of times. And Is this F Troop? Are you one of the Indians in F Troop? What was the name of that tri- tribe, Fez? Um, I don't remember. Were they the Where the Fuck Are We's? <laughs> very <laughs> short. Where the Fuck Are We's? They used to run around. They're very short. They run around a cornfield yelling, Where the Fuck Are We? They could get that on TV. <laughs> oh, you say it fast enough. <laughs> Where the fuck are we? <laughs> I'm lost. Where the fuck are we? Uh, Fez, I checked my email at ronandfez at AOL.com. Everybody thinks that animal yours has worms. Really? <laughs> yeah. Which, the only way I would have got it is in your apartment. They could have come to me with worms. Oh. Couldn't it? Now, I hope that thing hasn't been on your furniture or under your furniture. Oh, it's been everywhere. It's you been got all worms over the... everywhere then, brother. Oh, man, I'll never get rid of them. And I'm not kidding you when I say it. It crawls in and out of their ass. Oh, jeez. <sighs> you know a fucking cat's asshole is just sticking out there. Oh. Like the fucking clock in Union Square. Yeah, they show it <laughs> off like they're on the runway. How could you live with a wormy fucking asshole cat? I didn't know it had worms. I go home yesterday. The thing's got nipples and its stomach is huge. Cats are just the worst. That cat is. That's what you get by getting a cheap cat. You wouldn't want to pay for it. Had to get a feral cat. I thought I was doing a good thing, and this cat has done nothing but screw me. (laughs) Then you have worms. (laughs) Not that kind of screwing. All right, uh, Dave, is your... uh... Yeah, I just completed it. Yep, I just completed it right now. Great to be writing again. It feels so good to get the magic out of my hand, through the pen, yeah. and onto the paper. So your thoughts start with your hands. You're, you have yeah. magic hands. I have magic, yeah. That's what the it's way I not, about. not your brain. No. Not your creativity. It's, it just happens. Automatic writing. Yeah. It goes through me. We hmm. were ta- You were talking about Mr. Dillon and Mr. Newhart. I feel like I'm, you know, we're all You're writers. the third one. We're all writers. Mm. All right, uh, so this is a poem. What's the name of it? The poem is called Victory's, Victory is Ours. Do you need any kind of poetry music? Yeah, I'd love it, actually. Yeah. Victory is Ours, Corporate Big Wigs. There's a comma there. This, and by the way, you're our second poet on the show this week. It's very exciting. Yeah. Well, like, um, Jimmy was fantastic. Yeah. <clears throat> we strike fear into their hearts. No pun intended. Now we are victorious. The man's will we bended. Mm-hmm. We sit, we sing with joy, like Mark Anthony and them. For as Freddie Mercury said, we are the champions. <laughs> you owe us money. We aim to grab it. We ain't asking who's on third, like Costello and his crony Abbott. It's no laughing matter. Shit, it ain't funny. Like Cuba Gooding said in that movie. Suckers, now show us the money. The end. And that's all I, That's all we want. We want what's ours. And, and now we have it. Thank you. Feels good to be back. Feels good to be writing again. Feels great. Do me a favor, uh, Fez. Take a copy of that, make it into DVDs, and send it to the Writers Guild mm-hmm. of America. Send it to TMZ. Okay. And let them know that some writers... I've decided to cross the picket line and start writing. What are you talking about cross the picket line, though? With the strike is over, so boom. Strike isn't good. over. There's no three-day strike. What are you talking about here? Strike is still on. Yes. What are you talking about here? You just made me into a scab? You are a scab. 
The no, last one. No! no one can make anyone do anything. The this last one lasted 22 weeks. You think this one's over in three you days? Fucking told me I have the spy report, which I take very seriously. Give him the music that he likes when he's writing. Don't is give me the music. Is this is your new poem? This is not a poem. You just made me into a scab. You made me crush my own fucking brothers and sisters. I am not. By the way, I think this was your wedding music. It might have been. <laughs> what is so funny? That you're screaming to your own wedding music. Because you like you're guys cursing told that me day. That I got fun in my mouth. You got what? <laughs> you guys... What's in your mouth? <laughs> what happened to him? What the fuck? Because blood. I'm fucking is ravenous with rage here. There was blood in your mouth? Like phlegm and blood at the same <laughs> time. I don't know what the hell is going on with my That's body. Flub. <laughs> flub. <laughs> hey, well, this, this, this is not a fucking funny joke. You guys just made this whole thing out to be some big fucking joke. Here, fine. Well, you did it again to me, didn't you? <laughs> yeah. All there right, you put your pants back up. <laughs> what? We have guests here. Come on, stop. Earl. There's people, there's fans watching. Earl, why do you turn your head away from his ass? Because it's oh, it's hideous. Don't put your head next to it. I'm not, not putting my head next to his ass. ass. You, go ahead. You, you fucked me already. <laughs> Fuck me again. Come on, <laughs> pose together. Oh, this dick. He's watching. He's oh, rubbing okay. his ass on him. Oh, okay. oh he's got oh. his bare ass Let on him. Let me Earl. sit on you. Earl, stay at your station. Let me sit on you. <laughs> Earl, pull your pants down and go ass to ass with him. I'm not going to ass to ass with I don't know if this ass. is the appropriate music for ass to ass. It's the wedding music. Oh, yeah. You sons of bitches, man. You sons of bitches. I don't know what the hell I'm going to I'm going to have to write my... I'm going to have to write my shop stewards. I'm going to... I I might even get kicked out. I don't know. What your shop steward is John Stewart, which is crazy. No, it's not. It isn't? No, it's a guy named Colin. Colin Stewart? <laughs> Stewart is or, not the name. It's or is just... it Colin Alke? <laughs> <laughs> Everyone hey, uh, keeps laughing, but yeah, it's we're laughing. You just made me a scab, and I can't take it. Uh, Brad, you're on Run Fez. Dave, how you doing, buddy? Yeah. It's okay to be uh, be a scab. Scabby. Okay, Brad. I right, think writers are pissed. You're, are you a writer, Brad? Yes, he is, and he, you just let him down. I'm putting your name on the list, Brad. I ain't, I was not a willing scab. But what? Willing. I didn't get... I, oh, I was, thought you said welling. I was, or swelling. Scab. No. Once again, I get my mouth shat on. Shat in your mouth? Shit in my mouth. Anyone have some more? Anyone want to throw some shit in me? Anybody got a pinch of loaf? You got one? He's eating. Here you go. I thought it was phlegm and blood. Here you go. Her. Earl, go shit in his mouth. Use me like a toilet. Go ahead. Go shit in his mouth, Earl. Do it, Earl. Earl, either shit in his mouth or you're out. Use me like like a toilet if you think What is it, Earl? Go ahead. <laughs> Earl's doing his bad stuff. He's going to shit in his mouth. Use me like a this toilet. This is so disgusting. <laughs> Go ahead. You think it's funny. Huh? Get a picture of this. Two idiots in a cup. Get a picture of this. Go ahead. <laughs> Go ahead. Use me. Go ahead. Because you fucked me already. You already shat on me. Go ahead. Use me. Go ahead. Come on, Earl. Use me then. Go ahead. I can't shit. Go ahead, take it. You don't have to go? Oh, I can't go. Shit on me. I'm shit shy. Shit on my back. Shit on my back. Shit on my back. Now I'm shit shy because he's Take it out, Earl. What? You're off the shit show. Pull him. Out, Earl. You're out. Shit on my back. <laughs> You're out, Earl. Oh, Get man. out. Pitsy. You know what, Earl? Dave, since you've been through a... Jump into the into that seat. The guy can't even shit on another guy's back. I don't know what the hell's the matter with him. <laughs> Everyone thinks it's funny. You guys made a fucking People are laughing, laughing at laughing you. laughing at me outside. You had him when you said uh, shit in my mouth. He wasn't willing to do it. I don't know where the... I don't know why the high society fourth mic is here. Uh, <laughs> the other guy is great. <laughs> Everybody likes the other guy. Yeah. Dominic, you're on Ron and Fez. Ron, you were so close with f but it's the heck howies. No, where the fuck are we? No, where the heck are we? <laughs> oh, what are you, a baby? Ah, uh, TV. A big ass prize close of you. Tom, you're on Ron and Fez. Hey, Ron. Hey, cat fucker. I just want to say I love Scab Scabberson. Okay. <laughs> Wise guy. The poet. There's no Scab Scabberson. There's no Bob Bobberson. It's Sky Guyerson. <laughs> and if, maybe I am a scab. Maybe he's got to come back. I don't know. I don't know what the, what I'm gonna do here. I honestly don't know. I'm not gonna shit shit on you. What was it? Did anyone else hear ringing? Yeah, yeah. I hear ringing. What is that ringing from? Oh. Is that your phone? I think it's not mine. Yeah, it's Fez's phone. I had it. Well, answer for him. I 
Answer my phone for me, please. It could be important. Uh, hello, this is Fez's phone. Whoops. How do you even hit this? Hi, this is Fez's phone. This is Apollo Callahan. Uh, please leave a message. Mailbox is full and cannot accept any messages at this time. Was that a pants call? No, <laughs> you just called Polo. You called Polo? No, I don't know. Yeah, my phone called Polo. I called Polo like yesterday. <laughs> so sure. now yeah, my... Your phone just called them now. Oh, great. That's what I need. My phone calling Polo out of all people. Just by itself. Let me see if your phone's okay. Meow. Meow. Do not call my house. You're going to drive that either worm or your pregnant cat nuts. Meow. You make her insane when you do that. She hears She's it. insane from the bugs in that filthy fucking apartment. And then she knocks things over and breaks stuff. Because she's trying to rub her ass on everything there is. Aww. She's in fucking vicious pain. I wanted one pet, not thousands of worm pets. I just want to say something. When you're a jet, you're a jet all the way. From your first cigarette to your last dying day. Mm -hmm. That's all I'm saying. Okay. Oh, uh, Homestar wanted to add something about the scab. Uh, that's the end of my show. Donk.